at this point, they do a, like a perp walk through the airport with them. But they're on a private jet. So yes. they were flying their private jet from gate B2 of a commercial <laughs> airport. <laughs> There's other people waiting at that gate yes. to board their private jet. <laughs> the fast lane is really slow right now. Yeah, the private jet that comes after them pulls up to that <laughs> gate. <laughs> So yeah, but we're in group five on the private jet. <laughs> <laughs> we're the only people on it. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because I'm not qualified for normal shit. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. We got Epoch Studios today. Oof. Very exciting. Oof. It bothers me that I, I know what that means. Right, when yeah, I see it's, it. it's one of those, like, the, all of the production logos come up and we know immediately what we're in for, right? That's scary at this point. Now, Eli's off this week, but we are excited to welcome back the hardest working guest masochist in the business, Michael Marshall. Marsh, welcome back. Uh, thank you. Not just Epoch Studios. We are bringing out the big guns. We have not one, but two, three star names we in do. this movie. <laughs> this is exciting. Yeah. This is the most star-studded film you've ever got me into. Yeah, I think star -studded so. Star-studded with lots of asterisks. To be <laughs> <Yeah. clear>. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched The Firing Squad. It's the story of death row prisoners and how Christian theology shows us the death penalty is actually super cool because mm -hmm. it's actually the death reward if you think about <laughs> it is. inside of Christian theology. It is. And Marsh, how bad was this movie? Well, if you want a boring 90-minute promotional video on the benefits of Bitcoin, <laughs> you will not love this movie. <laughs> but... If you loved prison movies like The Green Mile, but you had absolutely no idea what makes those films interesting or watchable, mm -hmm. you will love this movie. This movie is the Shawshank <laughs> pretension. Is what this is. <laughs> so well done, dude. Yeah, so to be clear, we announced a different movie at the end of the last episode, so super sorry if you watched that shit. Marsh actually watched it first, and he was like, guys, this is just some assholes talking about Bitcoin for an hour and a half, yeah. and not even in a funny way or anything. Mm -mm. So if you watch that movie for no fucking reason, uh, just... Take comfort in the fact that so did Marsh. So at least we got to <laughs> do that. On my birthday, no <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> we considered doing that Flatly movie just again. Yeah. But then we, then we found this. Blackbird, fuck yeah. I would do Blackbird every week if we could get away with oh, that. 100%. Yeah. yeah, but but we decided the Bitcoin thing was just Eli pranking us. The point was obviously to try to make Heath watch that, not Marsh. So sorry about that. But we pulled an audible to this one. And if you're being surprised by that, hey, follow us on social media. We do announce these things on social media. So it's it's your fault, really, if you think about it. <laughs> All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for Be the Best or Be the Worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go Best Worst Geography of Asia. Sure. Because <laughs> the main characters in this film are drug runners, which means they travel between countries taking the packages of drugs and, and getting them to drug dealers and things. But when we say between countries, this guy dots around Asia in the most complex and completely <laughs> useless of patterns. One minute, he's like on the border of China, and then he flies closer to China by by driving like uh, by flying like five hours south. He's talking about crossing mm -hmm. over the mountains to China. There are four countries between him and China at the time, and he's on an island. This movie does not know anything about Asia. It's amazing. I don't think this movie knows about the difference between country and city nope. at certain times. No, it, doesn't, it, doesn't. it certainly doesn't know the difference between province and city. I guarantee you that <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, so I'm going to actually just drop right off of yours, Marsh, with best worst Chirons. Okay, so mm. clearly someone was paid by the Chiron. This movie has so many unnecessary lower thirds that if anything are wrong and cause extra confusion... Yeah, they, they really do. There are times we geolocate to, to a specific building. And the thing is, you can look that building up and you can say, that's not the building. Right. Why give me the name <laughs> of the building and then show me something that isn't that building? Why are you lying? Or it'll tell you what time it is and you'll be like, no, it isn't. That's not the time <laughs> at all. I can tell by the no, sun. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. You didn't right. establish exactly. anything by telling yeah, us the exactly. time. So why lie? <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to go with the obvious one. 
Best worst, best best, Cuba Gooding Jr. Oh, God. Oh, God. Cuba he Gooding is Jr. in this movie. He's a great actor, as I understand it. He's an Oscar this. winning actor. Yeah. He I've certainly has been. Yeah. Loved him many times. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I loved him in this. He fucking goes for it in this. He takes big swings. And I'm not even sure. Like, I think it might be he's so good because. He's just in a fugue state and he was there in Singapore or wherever they filmed this and they filmed him <laughs> doing his thing in real life right now. All right. Well, yeah. Speaking of that, I I have to go burn my VHS copy of Jerry Maguire now. So we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> but we'll be back in a minute with all the green screen and somehow worse live action locations that are <laughs> the firing squad. Hey, guys. So uh, where's Eli this week anyway? Oh, a debtor's prison, actually. Oh, is is that still a thing? Uh, no, it's not. But they they brought it back specifically for him. A lot, a lot of action in the stock market lately. He's been been buying a lot of dips. Buying dips. Yep. Yeah. It's a real shame they didn't have green light when he was a kid. Oh, what's uh, what's green light? Green light is a debit card and money app for families where kids learn how to save, invest, and spend wisely, and parents can keep an eye on kids' money habits. There's even a chores feature that lets you reward kids for honoring their responsibilities around the house. Wow, is that all? Yeah, should I answer yet? No and no. There's also Greenlight's Infinity Plan, which includes the same access to financial literacy education that makes Greenlight a valuable resource for millions of parents and kids, plus built-in safety to give you peace of mind. Such as? Well, with Greenlight Infinity, teens can check in without needing to actually check in thanks to family location sharing. They can also call for help when they need it with SOS alerts that connect them to family members, 911, or both. There's even a feature that detects car crashes and will connect your young drivers to 911 dispatch and alert emergency contacts if need be. Well, that's amazing. How do I sign up? Sign up for Greenlight today and get your first month free when you go to greenlight.com slash awful. That's greenlight.com slash awful to try Greenlight for free. Greenlight.com slash awful. Awesome. So um, how long is he going to be in debtor's prison? Well, it was only supposed to be for the weekend, but now he won't leave. Really? Yes, as he likes the gruel. Mm -hmm. Right. Reminds him of home. Sinjin Shropleshire, the best cameraman in the business. I am so glad to have you on board. Oh, it's so great to be here. So as you can see, the Militia Cosplay Fantasy Camp is going to let us film at their property. That includes an abandoned prison. And that's where we're going to be doing the scene today. Right. Good stuff. So um, just curious, who have you got on board for the cast? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> we, we didn't have a lot of budget. So we're going to be using the people at the fantasy camp mostly uh, for the prison staff. Okay. Are they actors? They're players. So no? Correct. Right. Okay. I guess we'll figure it out. Well, we also, we have Kevin Sorbo and Eric Roberts. Oh, you give them free tickets to fantasy camp. Yeah. And I let them give out Jesus pamphlets. Yeah, that tracks. But but we did we did get Cuba Gooding Jr. as well. Yeah, he's going to be leading the scene we were about to shoot. Actually, nice. He is a great actor. Sure. Yeah. Uh huh. So so for this shot, it's a big dramatic moment on death row right before an execution. All right. Um. Yeah. I'll I'll get everything set up. Sounds good. I'll leave you to it. Later that day, after the scene was shot. Cuba! Cuba Gooding Jr. That's me. Amazing stuff. Loved your singing. Oh, thanks so much, fellas. But uh, all credit to God, right? And Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Of course, our Lord and Savior. Jesus, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, thanks again for doing the movie. Sorry, the what? <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off by learning that, yes, this movie was brought to us by Epic Studios, that is the Falun Gong cult. Nice. Sure is. Yeah, solid. Brought to you by the spinning swastika people. That's fine. That's a good <laughs> yep. start. That's, yeah. So the movie opens, we get the production logos, and then we open on John 12, 24, which is the unless a grain of wheat falleth to the earth that dies alone, it remaineth, whatever that fucking thing is, you know. Therefore, the death penalty is awesome. Yep. 
that's yeah. the message, I think. <laughs> well, what's funny is they, they're like clearly trying to send the message that it's barbaric, but they want to like they want to say it's barbaric, but not the way you guys do it in America. Yeah. You guys are okay. it's barbaric, but in a good mysterious way. way. Yeah, yeah, silver right. lining. Yeah. So we're going to open up at a prison in Bali, Indonesia, and there's going to be an execution. That we know that because multiple reporters with umbrellas are telling us about that. Yeah. Yes. They have very little information beyond that. They're doing an entire report just being like, yeah, they're going to kill some people at exactly midnight. So that's what we know. There's also a point where they say like this, there's a, a one-time drug dealer turned pastor along with two others are going to be executed. And I'd be really sad if I was being executed, but I didn't get equal billing on the execution. Right. Even. I was just an, an, an addendum. <laughs> Right. Yeah. No kidding. One of those people is Cuba Gooding Jr. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but the VO comes up, not Cuba Gooding Jr. The VO comes up and he says, I'm about to be executed in two hours, but I'm not worried about it because Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then people, and he's like, people ask me why I'm going to be executed. And I say, well, would you like the long version or the short version? And I'm like, don't tease me, you fucking bastard. Yeah, just, just no. Can I say no to that? <laughs> if you're not going to listen when I yell at the screen, no, then don't ask the question. Yeah, right? So, but we rewind to 2013 through some some jet-setting millionaire shit. <laughs> and let me say, I, like, honestly, I should have gone with my best worst, like, best worst movie with no budget trying to do millionaire shit. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of him standing in front of a green screen with Michelin stars on it, though. Yeah. So that's true, but they do have access to a Ferrari. Now, they're not allowed to take it anywhere more than three miles an hour, but yes, they do yes. have 10 minutes of access to a Ferrari. Somebody's buddy was like, you can park it once. Slowly park it slowly. Not once. parallel park. I did not say parallel park. <laughs> yeah, when he parks it, he's like two feet from the curb. Because yes. he's like, you, don't you dare scuff those wheels. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but it, the, our narrator explains to us, this is Peter is the character's name, Peter Lone. He's like before, and honestly, this is a real guy. If it wasn't, I would be making fun of what a stupid fucking name Lone is to give to this guy. But <laughs> anyway, so, but he's like, before I found Jesus Christ, I was a, this is the actual line. Before I found the Lord Jesus Christ, I was a drug runner. I lived life in the fast lane. Come on. Whoa. Like, if I was trying to come up with an example of bad writing, I would have been proud of that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 100%. Other people, their life in their lane was like, bah, 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 bah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm eight. I also, I love the fact that he says, you know, I was a genius at it. I was a drug smuggling, like a drug running genius. But we'll see that his genius is carry the drugs in a big bag, like a really yes. big bag. <laughs> a large bag over the border, yeah. But no, but he's running cocaine into China and he's going to get in trouble. And we learn that because somebody says, you're smuggling cocaine into China, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> like literally every conversation that the drug dealers have in this movie will be, wow, we sure are going to get caught and get in a lot of fucking yeah. trouble. <laughs> The drug dealers meet up here and I wanted the other drug dealer guy to be like, hey, did you drive a fucking Ferrari here with a giant <laughs> thing of drugs? That's so dumb. Yeah, he's a genius uh, drug smuggler. You parked so far from the curb, too. <laughs> yes. He's the genius drug smuggler who just drives around in a Ferrari at all times being completely conspicuous and standing out and flying everywhere in a private jet just to, to yep. really, really emphasize it. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so then we we pop over to Hong Kong for a little smuggling. And this is where, like, my best worst part starts coming up because we get so many of these location chirons that don't fucking matter. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's in Hong Kong for, like, all of, like, one second on screen. They're doing a, a deal on a boat. Mm -hmm. And the boat is called the Duck Ling. Yes. Like, like a baby duck. You've named your, like, <laughs> yes. super <laughs> evil smuggling thing. Like, is your other boat called the Pup P? Like, yes. Yes. <laughs> Also, do you do a lot of cocaine smuggling on pirate ships? Was, that was not <laughs> like a around. modern boat or not anything. No. <laughs> the triangular trade of cocaine. Yes. And <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but he's telling us about how he, he dined at five-star restaurants all over the world and lost money at all of the best casinos and shit. And then the title card pushes us back into Bali. Yes. And it's like, it's like, what? 
We just got to Hong Kong. I have not even set foot down yet in Hong Kong. What are we doing? <laughs> well, we went Hong Kong to like Monte Carlo for the casinos. And like Monaco is a complete shit all other than that one building that you see. But then they gamble in Vegas and then they're eating at a five-star restaurant in Rome. And it's short to illustrate that because they can't get to a five-star restaurant on the budget <laughs> that they have. We just see the receipt of what they ate. Yeah, it's and it's so like, silly. Did you pause it on the receipt? I did, yeah, yeah. They paid 34 <laughs> ah, euros for beef and cheese. And... <laughs> Sure did. 20, 21 euros <laughs> for stuffed dates. Yep. Stuffed dates wow. for 21 euros. This restaurant saw them coming. Yeah, they went to <laughs> apparently a Michelin starred tapas bar in Rome and they ordered three beef and cheeses when they were there. <laughs> they did, yeah, yeah. That's the life in the fast lane. Yeah, for you no, right exactly, there. exactly. I also love that it says Hong Kong and then it shows them in Vegas and shit. Yeah. So, and then it says Bali and it shows them in a fucking private jet over water. And I'm like, that's that place isn't underwater though. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is set in the year 2030. So by then, oh, it will all be right, underwater. Shit. I, yeah. Nope, yeah. yep, that makes sense. <laughs> also, he pays with an Amex black card. And obviously, that's supposed to be like, oh, you know, he's a uh, life in the fast lane, you know, lots of money. I don't think, though, that drug dealers generally pay things with credit cards. I feel like they're using a lot of cash. Yeah, I feel like Amex would probably ask questions when he tried to open that account and put a lot of money through it. Yeah, there's probably <laughs> yeah, right. some questions to get asked. Right, yeah. Well, the, also, I love the fact that this movie has to stop and go like, oh, the Amex Black card, that's a very exclusive card that only people who live life in the fast lane would have, huh? Because they know this fucking, this movie's audience doesn't know what the fuck that is. In many ways, it's the Ferrari of credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> In that you're allowed to show it on screen, but do not use it. Do yeah, not right, right. Use it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so okay, so but now they're in their private plane, and I love this private plane set because it's so clearly not moving, right? And they don't know how to move the camera in such a way to make it look like it's moving. So the the plane isn't moving. The windows are all closed. And they, they're filling out the embarkation cards and he gets all nervous because it says death sentence for drug traffickers at the time. Yes, it says a death penalty for drug traffickers. This means you, the men in this film, we're talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting move by Indonesia or whatever country they're going to. It's like name, date of birth. We execute drug dealers. <laughs> yep. Thanks. Well, it gets even worse, right? Because the, the, we get the title, the, the firing squad comes up and then we get him walking through airport security and the airport security guy just looks at him and goes, are you a drug dealer? And he goes, no, you're a fucking drug dealer. I'm not. Yeah, it's very much like drug dealer says what? Yeah. Oh, well, that, that huh? I said, huh, that's not what. That's different, different. Different thing. And then he says no, kind of angrily. And, you know, the Indonesia TSA guy's like, all right, cool. Ooh, yep. No, oh, sorry. Well, we have to ask, <laughs> yeah. right? I'd be. I would be so tempted to go. Hey, wait, what do you need, man? So I would. I like. I'm never going to go to Indonesia just because yeah, I would be. Don't do that'd that. be way too tempting. Yeah. But yeah. It's, and also, by the way, the next guy in line, they don't ask him that, right? So like, very clearly, Peter just looks like a goddamn drug runner. <laughs> yeah, fair. he does. Yeah. So then we get another Chiron that tells us we're in Kuta, Indonesia, which, which is in Bali. It is, yes. That yeah. would be like that would be like a Chiron that cuts from California to Los Angeles. It's just <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. But yeah, so this is where we're going to meet Lou, right? Lou shows up with a briefcase full of money at um, at Peter's fancy house. Oh, and I love the fancy house. The, the fancy house is one of those like footballers' fancy houses where everything is white. Every surface of yep. this entire house is white. <laughs> but they've got the craziest choice because in the massive floor to ceiling windows that overlook the ocean, they've got what looks to be rocks in display cases. So yes. it's like he's like an international drug smuggler who also loves to display his fossil collection, I guess. Uh, clearly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and I love Lou. Luke shows up and he's, and of course, he's in ripped jeans and a t-shirt and a giant briefcase. He's got a stack of $100 bills sticking out of his back pocket. I noticed that shit right away. But he goes, yeah, guys, I think the cops followed me here. And they're like, well, why the fuck did you call me here then? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was being followed by the cops. So I thought we should do this really quickly because like, yes. if we hang around, they're definitely coming in. <laughs> So yeah, so so Peter checks the briefcase and he's like, hey man, this is missing a giant stack of $100 bills. And Lou goes, ha, you got me. Right? And he just hands, like, I feel like you get, 
You get shot for that, though, don't yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> there's punishment to that. Yeah, yeah. It's not just like japes, and uh, you don't get a little ruffle of the hair kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, beef and cheeses are on me next time. <laughs> <laughs> Life in the fast lane together. And, and this is one of my favorite moments because this is where he says, you know, I'm going to, yeah, another plan. I'm going to head over the mountains into China. It's going to be great. First of all, mm-hmm. that's, the way he says it's going to be great sounds like he's planning his hiking weekend. Like he's, yep. he's got a kind of thing. But we've just, as you say, established that they're in Kuta, <laughs> Indonesia. So over the, he's going over the mountains into China. That's a 5,000 mile trek. <laughs> <laughs> it involves four sea crossings and pass, passing through Malaysia, <laughs> Cambodia, Laos and Vietnam on the way. <laughs> Like where they are right now is significantly closer to Australia than it is China. Yes, and right. he's a genius, apparently. Yeah, and, and of course, they, they talk about how they're all going to get caught and they're going to go to prison one day. And then he leaves. And Peter, he turns to his sidekick. I don't even remember his sidekick's name, but he turns to his sidekick and he's like... It's Morgan, right? Oh, is it? Okay. Oh, it yes. Morgan. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So he turns to Morgan and he's like, you want to do a different scene now? He's like, yeah, let's, <laughs> yeah. Do, a, let's do a different okay. scene. Morgan? <laughs> <laughs> So then we so we follow him back to Hong Kong. This time they, they stay in the Peninsula Hotel, right? He knows the name of a fancy hotel in Hong Kong. Damn it. Does he say we always stay here when we're in Hong Kong? He does say that. It's like, again, that is not a good strategy for a drug dealer, for a genius drug smuggler to be like, yeah, no, we've got a standing reservation at some of the <laughs> yeah, fancy right. hotels just to make right. it really super hard to find us. Yeah. So and, and and of course we see them at the Peninsula Hotel, or I'm sorry, standing in front of a green screen with the Peninsula Hotel on it. <laughs> yeah talking about how dangerous their drug dealing job is and how they're certainly going to get caught one of these days. And it's great because as you say, they're in Hong Kong, which it's worth pointing out is somewhere that is significantly closer to China than they were in Bali. They dropped their (laughs) drug dealer off in Bali and then they flew to (laughs) the border of China. (laughs) What are the logistics of this drug operation? Like, Cocaine makes a lot of money, I would imagine, but not like this. They're fucking this up. Well, yeah, and also, they, so they, we see a green, this is where we meet his girlfriend, his fiance, and we get this green screenshot of them trying to hail a cab in Hong Kong. And then the very next scene, the Chiron tells us that we're in Jakarta. And I'm like, wow, that's an expensive cab. <laughs> <laughs> that is a five hour flight <laughs> south back to where they just were. <laughs> the little title card might as well say, like, Nope, just kidding. <laughs> We're in Jakarta. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, but also this is where they put, he says like, well, you know, we never heard from Lou again. Sure hope he made it there with all that cocaine. <laughs> and there's also a point like the, the sound mixing was so bad in uh, in the film as well that while he's explaining lots of this in voiceover, it's like, it's so quiet in voiceover that it sort of sounds like a rap, like a spoken word thing under the music, like a faithless B-side. I was yeah. kind of getting into it. <laughs> so, okay. And then we get this amazing scene where Peter and Morgan are at a mall in Jakarta and somebody comes up to try to Jesus them. <laughs> right. And they try to do the Ray Comfort's are you a good person thing? But Peter's just like, no, I'm bad. Fuck <laughs> off. And I'm like, that is such a good answer, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But he had no time. He tells us in the voiceover, he had no time for Christians. He thought they were a bunch of losers. So, okay. So the next day, they're in a private jet. They're waiting to take off. I guess they're they're going to do one last job, one big job, because they're still obviously talking about how they're going to get caught constantly. Yeah, because like Morgan was just saying, like, oh, yeah, I think this one's going to go bad. I think he says something like, we're flying too much. And you know what? He's completely right. They definitely Correct. are flying too much. They're not thinking of the carbon footprint. Like, yes. <laughs> I hope they don't get taken down by, like, the international drug police. I hope they're getting taken down by, like, a climate change Twitter account that tracks their private jet <laughs> movement. I hope that's what brings them down. Greta Thunberg catches them with a pizza box. In yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, but yeah, so they're sitting on their private jet again, right, waiting to take off, having this incredibly banal conversation. Apparently, he also directs commercials. That's <laughs> the other job this guy does when he's not running drugs. Oh, that's the cover story, I think, for why they're flying around so much. Yeah, well, yeah, right, right. He does do that, I guess. Is it? But yeah, but then the jet gets raided, and they they're under arrest for being drug dealers. Raided by what looks like the U.S. Army, I think, because yes. they're all wearing like military fatigues. Mm-hmm. 
like those are camouflage fatigues. They're on a private jet. They're on an airport. They're not very well. That's not useful camouflage in that place. Like that's not what they'd be wearing to do that. I don't imagine. <laughs> so you wouldn't think these people got their 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 costumes from like Stolen Valor Emporium and they own them for real. <laughs> oh, that's why so few of them match. And like occasionally there's just a complete yes. ringer wearing something crazy. Yeah, like, completely unrelated. To some yes. crazy outfits. Yeah. So, but the VO at this point, they're they're gonna do it. They, they do a, like a perp walk through the airport with them. But they're on a private jet, so yes. they were flying their private jet from gate B two of the commercial <laughs> airport. <laughs> but also because of different signages around the around that gate, it was also gate C thirty five and right. just gate two. They were like, ah, oh, we have to take the air tram to get to our gate to our private jet. <laughs> and this, there's other people waiting at that gate yes! to board their private jet. <laughs> the fast lane is really slow right now. Yeah, the private jet that comes after them pulls up to that <laughs> gate. You see. So yeah, but we're in group five on the private jet. <laughs> <laughs> we're the only people on it. <laughs> Hope there's enough overhead bin space. So yeah. So then we get their interrogation. And at first, they, they're interrogating both him and Morgan. But then we forget about Morgan at a certain point. It's just Peter. But the guy, the Indonesian cop, who is the head of the drug enforcement agency and also the warden of the prison and also the chief executioner, and I think the president of the country, <laughs> has an oddly Nebraska accent. He does, he does. He, does. he, he looks like a, a fake Taika Waititi. Yes. I had him as a lookalike yeah. Waititi. And, uh, <laughs> but he is, he's the captain. He does the drug thing. He's the warden of the prison. Like, I thought I had a lot of jobs. This guy has no. me beat. I, I bet he has a lot of problems with switching Google accounts. Like, when he goes into the mail, <laughs> yeah. it always opens up the wrong Google account every time. <laughs> Tell me like, about it. It's weird that he, he gives them their, his full resume upon meeting the prisoners in the interrogation. <laughs> He's like, yeah, and I'm also, I'm allergic to red peppers. In my, in my spare time, I attend salsa classes. I bartend on Saturday nights. I'm drug czar during the week of this country, Saturdays. We have a really good happy hour menu on Saturdays, actually. You can come by. If you, if you do get out. Tapas, so. beef and cheese. <laughs> so, yeah, but, uh, but Peter's like, we're innocent. So he smacks him. And he says, I direct commercials for a living. So he smacks him again. Yeah. He says, these drugs have been planted on us. It's like, what drugs? We saw you give your drugs to that extreme hiker earlier. You <laughs> right. didn't have any drugs. I wanted drugs are to be like, oh yeah, we didn't find any drugs, just money. But thanks what? for that. We're yeah. going to go find those drugs that you <laughs> awesome. have. Yeah, and he explains to him that they're both going to get the death penalty, hence the name of the movie. And that he's the executioner, apparently. He said, yes, I'm going to uh, kill you myself. It's like, could somebody else in Indonesia get a job? Could you stop holding <laughs> all the jobs? <laughs> But then, but then he goes to interrogate the the Russian wife or the uh, the fiance, mm. and she's like, "I didn't know he was a drug dealer. I want to leave him." And he's like, "That's because you're a gold digger." Like, man, that was unnecessary. She's just, you know, she's just there. That feels like a line that executive producer Kevin Sorbo put in. You know, when, when the going gets tough, the gold diggers always leave. Oh so, yeah. yeah, Kevin Sorbo put that in after the divorce. Didn't yeah, he? That's, that's when that, that line went in. <laughs> Fucking cocaine girlfriends, am I right? Everybody gets it, right, guys? <laughs> also, right? She says, I didn't know. And he's like, oh, okay. Yeah, you're free to go. So that was, easy, that was as easy as that. He just had to, she has to deny that he know that she even knows him. And she's totally free to go. No problems at all. Amazing yep. like, legal system. Well, I think honestly, at this point, he was like, oh, you're free to go. We have clearly reached your acting limit. We don't want you in the movie anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So then the movie fast forwards through the trial. Yes. I mean, and this is over and over again. The movie does this like, oh, wow, here's a great potential moment for suspense in the movie. Oh, we're done. We, we passed that. That <laughs> happened off screen, huh? Okay. I feel like that happened because they tried to shoot it and all they had was the tiniest <laughs> little room for the courtroom this and courtroom people hurt themselves. So, small. so they were like, we're just going to use the, we're going to do one tiny little thing. This is too much. This is too small. It's a, it's a walk-in closet. It is the size of the room I'm recording in right now. That's how it's small It's so that tiny. <laughs> it's hilarious because, okay, so they're, they're, they're awaiting their verdict, right? The trial's already over because we didn't have time for that shit. And they have this, like, Eric Roberts is going to be in the movie here. He's the U.S. consul and he's going to speak on their behalf. And they have this scene where they want Eric Roberts to walk in, like, to, to enter through the back and walk through the courtroom. But it's this tiny-ass little fucking walk-in closet and they've seated 
304 people in it. Yes. Why would there be a gallery? Of I, people <laughs> at this? And most of those people aren't Indonesian. They're very clearly like Westerners. So like people did, flew in. every American tourist in Indonesia like, so we'll, we'll go and have a look, actually. We've yeah, never seen right, right. anyone be sentenced <laughs> to death before. <laughs> and I, I also, I love Eric Roberts trying to squeeze past people with gravitas. It's great. Oh, it's the best. He's supposed to burst in and be like, my clients are in it. Sorry, I just got to scooch by. I just, yeah. can, I just scooch can you scooch it? Why are you all here? Did you fly here? This guy, are you tourists? Do you know him? So, but then, but Eric Robert, like, so the prosecutor's like, Your Honor, he was caught with seven kilos. He's guilty. And I'm like, Yeah, that's how court works. And Eric Roberts says, Your laws are stupid and we hate you and you people suck. And yeah. <laughs> that doesn't change his mind at all. Well, yeah. What he should have said was, Objection. No, he wasn't caught with seven kilos of cocaine. We saw him give that away. He did not have the cocaine. He objectively had no drugs on him. Lou had the this cocaine. This is a mistrial. Objection. None of you seem to know how any of this works. Is that helpful? <laughs> yeah. But Eric Roberts is also doing a dance here when he finally like scooches <laughs> his way to the defense table or whatever mm -hmm. and starts talking to the judge for just a second. He's just dancing back and forth the whole time. He's wrecked the human being Eric Roberts. Yes, he is, yeah. It's like the judge was a bee, right? And he's just in case you also, I have this little <laughs> dance language that I do. And so the judge is like, <laughs> the judge is like, so A, would you like to, would you guys, Peter and Morgan, would you like to say some of your bullshit? And they're like, yes, we would. And they start talking and the judge is like, shut up, I've heard enough death sentence for both of it's you. The best. Yeah, he's like, it's and so fast. shoots a lot of you. And he says that <laughs> so much that we cut to Eric Roberts and he reacts like he misunderstood and thinks he's also getting shot in <laughs> real life. That is the expression on Eric Roberts' face. Yeah, this judge is like, okay, this guy's dancing. Any arguments from the defendants? Because your lawyer's fucking wasted and yes. seems to think he's like <laughs> Foghorn Leghorn. I don't know what happened with his voice there. And they're like, we didn't do it. He's like, yes, you did. Uh, gavel, we're going to yeah. execute you. Also, I'm sorry, but were these like... Were the shackles toys? Were those plastic? <laughs> That's all they big. are absolutely from a pop-up Halloween store. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like handcuff chains from a medieval cartoon yes. for like animal, <laughs> like rhinos that are in the cartoon in jail. They had to take them off a decorative plastic skeleton that was like chained up on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, okay, so they get him to the prison. The VO comes over and he goes, I was on death row in a third world country. I'm like, oof, I don't think that's the terminology. Will and use. this is another one of those times where they tell us exactly, exactly where it is. It's the Indonesia Karabokan prison. And if you look that up, it is not the prison they're in. If you look it up, it's a genuinely hellish prison. Like this story, like the people mm -hmm. involved in this story went through a lot of torture and stuff. And there was all sorts of really horrible stuff goes down. What we see is like a holiday camp with like beautiful stretches of meadows and like yep. one chain link fence. And that yes. is the prison. <laughs> exactly. And the uh, voiceover goes, oh, they took everything from me. My cars, my houses, my cash, my fiance. And I'm like, look, that they didn't take that last one. She just, <laughs> no. she just fucked off. Okay. My favorite part about that VO is the actor playing Peter seems to know that he's also doing the VO during this point. But all we're watching is him walking in shackles into the jail mm -hmm. and he's acting as if there's a VO of him in his own flashback <laughs> and he's yeah. like nodding to yeah, right, the voice right. of yes, himself, no, right. looking up at his voice. It's, it's a pretty so good VO. Stupid. There's a lovely line. There's a lovely line in the voice of where it says, it was a strange international prison camp. The guards were these mercenaries from other countries. And I wanted to add, so when you think about it, it makes sense that they weren't doing the accent. It makes total sense that they weren't doing the accent. <laughs> <laughs> and that everyone's a different race. Yeah. <laughs> but, but they put Morgan in a different prison, right? Because he can go fuck himself. He's got no friends there. And then, but I guess that means that Captain Tanu the, was lying when he told him, I'll be the warden for you guys. Or maybe he's the warden at multiple he, prisons. He's got both jobs. Yeah. <laughs> he's the warden at two separate prisons. He's <laughs> moonlighting at a different prison. He has to do double shifts. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but then he gives his like his new prisoner monologue about how they can all suck balls and everybody hates them. Yeah, he says, and in this prison, we have Americans, we have Australians, Asians, Nigerians. Like, does he does this movie think Asians is a nationality? I think it so, does. Where does it think Indonesia is? Like, why is he saying that when he's in Asia? He just, right. It's like we've got you guys, we've got some users here, and then this. <laughs> I like that he starts them getting to the prison with like, 
the warm up comedian thing where he's yep. like name and who's Goose flying in from out of town? We got right. Australia, <laughs> right? Oh, that's pretty far. Huh? So, also, he there's there's what he says. You know, if, if you one guy puts his hand up and uh, and says sir and tries to speak. Yes, could I be made an example of, please? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, right, that's it. You've <laughs> yeah. you've spoken without being spoken to. Three days, no food, in solitary confinement. And then he says, that's the same punishment for trying to escape. So that seems like there's a scaling issue yeah. there. <laughs> right. Putting, yeah, putting your hand up and saying, sir, should not be a, as bad as attempted escape. Sir, shouldn't we make that more granular? You are you get three days too. It's <laughs> no, no, no. God damn it. So, okay. So they show Peter to his cell and they're like, if you try to escape, we'll shoot you dead. And I'm like, you were going to do that anyway, man. That's the whole <laughs> the name of the movie is the firing squad. And then Peter goes like, this was like your worst nightmare. I'm like, no, it's like your worst night. I have way worse nightmares than you, clearly, dude. <laughs> then this quite plush, this quite relaxing prison, which which the uh, the warden chooses as uh, welcome to Hotel Hanoi. Mm -hmm. like, Hanoi's in Vietnam. Yeah. Could one of you just buy a map, <laughs> buy an atlas, buy a globe? I don't care. Come on. <laughs> so, yeah, and we, we get this great moment where um, Peter, like, you know, is he's like losing it and he's like, slapping the walls in anger because like like clearly he should be punching the walls but they're just walls right so yeah. he can't so he doesn't and he doesn't want to hurt himself he definitely hurt himself the first few takes and then he was just like i'm gonna do slappy thing now and I'm slappy <laughs> thing. Yeah. why why and he shouts why yeah he's shouting why and it's like the answer is the drug smuggling man right like, you've been talking of, about all the drugs that's smuggling. all it's you guys that. ever talked yeah. about yeah <laughs> And he had to downgrade from like actual, you know, panic from being in jail into like kind of just a snit mm -hmm. because he hurt himself. <laughs> and then we get a shot of him just sad, kind of weeping on the floor. And I was like, yeah. oh, that's an actual shot of the actor. <laughs> that's what he actually punched at the space it, yeah. work for sure. Because remember, the, as the warden says, your first three nights here are terrifying, which is actually quite nice of the warden to set that expectation. You know, that it's the first right. three of the worst and it'll <laughs> yeah. get better. Like, why is he telling him that? <laughs> and also, get, great example again of this movie, <laughs> Fast Forwarding to a Suspense. He's like, the first three nights are the worst. You're going to go through so much hell. And then the movie immediately goes, 31 days later. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Which is also insane because earlier we were told that you're going to be executed in 30 days time. Like we're mm -hmm. going to send you to prison and you'd be executed in 30 days. We haven't been told you're putting an appeal in. So all nope. we knew is you're going to be dead in 30 days. And then we cut to day 31. And right. I wanted it to be him like a rotting corpse. <laughs> <laughs> it's bloating now, yeah. So yeah, but this is where we learned that Lou the guy that's tried to steal the stack of cash before, he's in this prison too, right? So the two of them are doing some work together and Peter gets angry and he starts like <laughs> talking shit to the warden. Yeah, he says to the warden, I've achieved more than you ever will, which... No, you haven't. You're a drug dealer. The warden has at least three jobs. Like, yeah, right. He's the only least. thing holding the Indonesian military <laughs> yeah. and prison systems together. And the karaoke scene of that right. city yes, on exactly. Tuesdays and Fridays. <laughs> But yeah, so he's like, you get three extra hours of labor. And so does Lou, the guy that like is the reason you got caught and in prison. I'm like, that, that's even money, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, like, yeah, I have to work hard. But the guy who got me caught also has to work harder. So I'm fine with that. Yeah. And by work hard, would we say work hard? Because the, the hard you. labor. Thank you, Marsh. Yeah, it's picking up a single half brick at a time, moving it four foot away and then putting it down in a slightly different pile of <laughs> yeah. half bricks <laughs> yes. at a leisurely pace. We get such a fun window into these movie writers because like they had to write torturous prison labor stuff. And all they came up with was like, pick up half bricks and put them in <laughs> a different pile. <laughs> you hear that? Later, they, they came up with use shovel, but first part only. So it's just like, put shovel in ground. Honestly, yeah, that's good enough. That's good enough. Honestly, like moving bricks and, and, and moving holes is, is like a very common uh, prison punishment. So yeah, it's, it's, so I, I think that is probably real, but... Oh, the like Sisyphean kind of feel yeah, to yeah, it. Ex ex yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah but they just, probably make them like pick up an entire brick right, and like, half exactly. a brick and, and, and probably and, and, at, a, at some sort of pace. Well, that's the other like, thing too, yeah, with some kind of urgency as sort yeah, of in your own time too, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't imagine it would be two prisoners and 19 COs. There's always so many fucking guards. The faculty to student ratio at this prison is amazing. This oh, is like God, a yeah. nice, tight, 
liberal arts college situation <laughs> going on. Well, you know why it is? Because everybody wanted to like wear camouflage and have a gun, right? Like everybody yes. showed up in camouflage with a gun and said, I want to be a guard. <laughs> so, or, or everybody <laughs> already had the camouflage and well, the, yeah. the budget couldn't spring for more than 10 <laughs> orange suits. In fact, 10 of the jumpsuits are the same orange. And then there's just like some prisoners in a different color Different jumpsuit. colors. Yep. yep. No some of them reason. are just yeah. like changing oil. Yeah. Maybe the camera team couldn't see those people in the camo so they didn't know how many. Oh, people. right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> So then we flash back to a week before his arrest because this movie has to have something in it, right? This is where we get the 10-minute slow pan of the Ferrari. Yes. <laughs> and, his, and his vanity plate. <laughs> his number plate is runner. And he's mystified as to how he got caught to the drugs runner driving around in a Ferrari. You don't generally want to put your crime on your vanity plate. <laughs> Generally, okay, but it's a double bluff. That would be that's that's <laughs> crazy. That's too convenient. Of course, I'm not a runner of drugs. I wouldn't put it on my license plate. So yeah, so we've been so we watch him drive his Ferrari very very slowly and then just park in the middle of the goddamn road. Yes, yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. We can walk to the curb. It's fine. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> So this is where we get the Amex black card too, right? Like the, he goes to shop at the fancy art shop, and they're like, "Oh, wow, you got the Amex black card." This is okay. Well, fancy art shop is a nice way of saying it. So again, window into the movie makers. They were like, okay, what's life in the fast lane? What do drug dealers really do when they have millions of dollars? <laughs> They're flying all over the world. Probably buy famous art at a mall, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're in a mall. I, you can see across the hallway from this art place, Names of mall stores on the other side. It's yeah, the no, they, and then we can go get a pretzel after we get the art. Yeah, and and there's an art salesman being like, "Welcome to the fancy art place. Here's the first art. It's <laughs> six by six. She's famous all over the world because of her She's colors. Famous for colors. Famous for colors. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think exact words. Uses That's colors what in, he in says. the art. He says that it's it's six foot by six foot and costs fifteen thousand like, dollars. Yeah, that's how you introduce art. Cause like you're paying yep. by the square foot. It's like wallpaper. Yeah, so yeah. there's a lot of square let's feet get, of let's art. Let's get down to brass tacks about this Matisse. <laughs> what are the dimensions and the dollars right now? How much? <laughs> yeah, and they're like, we'll take two arts, please. Cool, six by six, fifteen grand. Well, because he shows him two of the uh, the NASA spacesuits that have been like colored, and he says, and we'll take two of these as well. It's like, yeah, you buy them off the rack. These are art things. Just, just <laughs> yeah. throw those in. Just toss them in. Yeah, as we yeah, go. You have, you have a couple more in the back. Okay, great, great. Yeah. Oh, God. And when he shows the American black card, he goes, oh, American uh, Express black card. And he says, yeah, it saves us 1%. It's like, so he's, he's profligate, but thrifty with it. <laughs> I, I think the, you, you missed the line there because he's like, you don't see many of these. And he says, yeah, only the 1% is what he says. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, so, oh I I, I heard, heard the saving. Like I, I heard the cashback cash money award too, for sure. <laughs> I wanted to be like, also, it gets you into the lounge when you're on private <laughs> jets. It turns out you end up in the regular gates a lot of the time. You don't realize. <laughs> it's nice so to it's have nice to be able to go to the lounge. So then we cut to we get a new Chiron that tells us it's five days before the arrest. N none of these Chirons matter at all, right? No. But Peter and his and Morgan are standing around waiting on the drug guy, talking about how. They're probably going to get caught one day, and this is very fucking dangerous. <laughs> yeah. And then that guy shows up and is like, hey, guys, ready for the drug deal? Cool. Just a quick thing. Reminder, we all get executed for this crime we're criming right now if we get caught. I don't know why I said that, but that's yep. yeah, that's the situation. Yeah. And this is, this is, of course, Lou, who they never heard from again. Remember? Yeah. That? So this is Lou again. He's getting more drugs. And there's this great moment where he like checks the backpack for the drugs and then he tries to close it again and it won't fucking close. And he tries <laughs> to six, six fucking times. They're meant oh. to be geniuses. They, we are genius drug smugglers. They're, they, they're just, they've got a backpack with too much drugs in it. And it's like descending <laughs> the backpack in like really square, obvious kind of ways. Yes. And he says, yeah, but the bags are lead lined. Dogs can't sniff it out. Are those separate points? Are they? Do they think dogs can't sniff through lead? <laughs> I don't know what they're saying. I like that they packed the coke in styrofoam, mm -hmm. also, so that yeah, so the cocaine doesn't get bruised in <laughs> transit. I guess. <laughs> well, dogs can't smell through styrofoam heat. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. But okay, and then we cut to three days before the arrest because we still we needed to know that two days had passed. 
But two days have passed. This is a 13-hour flight they've just taken. So like, yes. <laughs> a, a decent chunk of that time has been in the air, which is insane because like in a sec, like in a second, we'll be two days before the arrest and we'll be back on the other side of the world. So like they spend all yep. of their time in flight. And so, <laughs> so, okay. And that's all the flashback you get for now, damn it. Then we cut to Pastor Kevin Sorbo introducing himself to Peter during yard time. Yeah. He says, hi, I'm Pastor John Lenbrook. And I was like, no, you're not. You're what's left of Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> <laughs> he is looking rougher and rougher. Yeah. He looks like, he like, you know, those toys old timey people would make out of like scraps. or He looks like a scrap leather toy of a horse. <laughs> <human being. laughs> what it is, is Kevin Sorbo ages four years every time he's on gam, right? Like every single time. So he's like 116 now. Yeah. But he's like, hey, Peter, do you want to learn to love Jesus quick before they kill you? And he's like, no, because my brother died of cancer, so I'm an atheist. And he's like, oh, is that how it works? He's like, yes, everyone who's an atheist had a loved one die of cancer. And he's like, is that all? He's like, no, my dad also died, too, so I'm a double atheist. <laughs> <laughs> but the VO comes in and says, I was not ready to hear about Jesus yet. It was still act one. And then fucking... <laughs> Oscar winning actor Cuba Gooding Jr. shows up. So weird. Oh, it's so strange to the see him. Only people who would be more incongruous to show up in this movie, which is almost entirely green screens to this point, are dead. Right? Like every other actor that I would have been more surprised to see is a dead person who's been dead for a long time. I think the only people more in Congress to turn up in this film would be us. Like if right, we were watching yes, it and yeah. we turned up, that's the only thing that would surprise me more. Eli just walks into the frame. <laughs> gotcha. Enjoying the movie while I'm off? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. How's, how about that Bitcoin, eh, boys? That's what he likes in the background. <laughs> So yeah, but but he Cuba Gooding Jr. comes up to him and says, hey, I hear you're the main character. He says, yeah. He goes, uh, do you want to escape? And he goes like, Fuck, fuck yeah, man, because we're going to get killed. So. Yes, have you thought about escaping? Like, I imagine that's all he's thought about. Yes. They're going <laughs> to kill him here. <laughs> so he's like, don't worry. I, Kuba Gooding Jr. is like, don't worry. I have a plan. We can escape <laughs> by pretending to be the media. And we all wrote in our notes, well, certainly there's more to the plan than that. And they're just, <laughs> they're just teasing us. At this point, with just that one little scrap of the that's the whole fucking plan. It's the best. Later in the movie, they will come back to this and be like, okay, let's restate the whole plan. Yep. We pose as the media. Yep. That's the entire it. fucking that plan. Entire sen that's it. Yep. That's the plan. Oh, and there's a great bit as well. He says, you know, about this plan. He said there's a it was a one in a million chance. Plus he helped he agreed to help my friend via the same method. <laughs> yes. That's right. But it, if he's doing a one in a million chance as well, the odds are now like one in a trillion, aren't they? For them to both come off. <laughs> <laughs> and they do. <laughs> they do. So and then so they they agree to help us, uh, each other escape. And then like he just goes to talk shit to Captain Tanu. Peter does. He just goes and he's like, hey, I should get a phone call. And Captain Tanu's like, no, no, you shouldn't, man. No, you're in like a hell prison in Indonesia. You're lucky you get to be outside. You're lucky you're wearing clothes. Yes. But, uh, it's such a luxurious prison. There's so much time and space. And like uh, in every shot, when there's any other prisoners, they're just like meandering happily around the meadows, like they're gambling yes. little lambs or something. <laughs> Captain Tano, I've noticed we only have still water available. Is there anything we can <laughs> do about sparkling. that? All right. Well, well, damn it if I haven't engineered it so that two interstitial breaks would be cued by me being depressed about Cuba Gooding Jr. being in this movie. So now I guess I'm going to go burn my copy of As Good As It Gets. But uh, we'll be back in a minute with even more of The Firing Squad. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. So as you can see from my data set, you're guilty of fraud. Hey, Heath, what you doing? Oh, hey, no. Yeah, I'm drafting a strongly worded letter for the lawsuit that I'm going to file because I found the, that the, the, the Wheel, Wheel of Fortune, Fortune card in Bellatra doesn't actually pay off one in four times like it claims. One in four times like it claims. Like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're not lying, and and I don't I don't think a lawsuit is a healthy way to deal with it either way. Have you considered therapy? Therapy? You're telling me therapy? can help with maniacal anger that leads to suing a video game? Yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you. And therapy should be a self-care non-negotiable. 
When your schedule gets full, it's easy to let your priorities slip and you forget to make time for the important things, especially when you're angrily compiling a data set of video game probability events for hours at a time. That's a lot. But when you feel like you have no time for yourself, non-negotiables like therapy are more important than ever. It can help you learn positive coping skills like not suing a video game. Have you considered BetterHelp? Oh, what's BetterHelp? It's a place to find the right therapist for you. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. All right, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. All right, thanks, Noah. No problem. So you you know there's a, a joker that doubles the probability of everything with listed odds, including the Wheel of Fortune, right? Okay, but then my glass card breaks every time, and I always lose them. Oh, yeah, yeah. They break half the time. Every single time they break, Noah. Okay. And why is that card called Oops All Sixes? It has a picture of a die that has a six on every one of its six faces. That doesn't mean double the odds on a die. Yeah, no, that actually is fraud. Let's. I'm back on board with the lawsuit. Let's make that Thank happen. Thank you. Liars. Welcome to the Karaboken prison, or as I like to say, welcome to hell. I'm Captain Tanu, and as you'll soon learn, I'm a godless heathen that lives to torture the scum under his charge. You'll be miserable. You'll be in anguish, and then you'll die. Any questions? Um, yeah, when do we eat? Oh, you think you're funny, huh? Well, let's see how funny you think it is. When you wake up tomorrow morning and there's a little hair on your tongue and you try to pull it off, but you keep missing it and you'll be going, how the fuck do I keep missing? I can feel it right there. Um, I'm sorry, is that something you're threatening to do to me? It's not a threat. It's a promise, maggot. Sure, you'll get it off eventually, but by then, you'll be really frustrated and your tongue will be uncomfortably dry. Is that what you want? Uh, no. No, I guess not. Damn right, you guess not. And if I hear any lip from the rest of you, I'll see to it that you don't realize you're out of milk until you've already poured the cereal. Um, Captain Tanu? That's Warden Tanu to you, and if you don't want to spend all afternoon in damp socks, this better be good. Well, sir, it's just that, yeah, a, a lot of these punishments, they're, uh, they're definitely unpleasant, but they're not like Indonesian death camp levels of bad. You know oh, I mean? oh, oh, no. You, you, you sound like you, you're some kind of guy who wants a pair of wired headphones that are always knotted up somehow. And while you're on knotting them, you just think, mm. to how the hell would this happen unless I climbed through a headphone loop while I was listening to them, yeah, which yeah, I okay. didn't. Right, right. See, like that right there. That's that's annoying with the headphones. Sure. But like, I feel like this is more of a rip off your fingernails with pliers kind of situation. Right. I mean, right. I feel like your heart's in the right place, but I don't know if this is a... Uh, it's really your calling to do the threats. Well, yeah, you know, I do about one out of every five jobs in Indonesia. So, you know, I can't spend all day coming up with new tortures. I, sure. Sure. I get it. Um, I get it. Just thought I'd point it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, no. I like, I, um, all right. Oh, hey, what if I made you spend all day putting in long passwords on your TV with a video game control? Okay. That's torture. Yes. Well done. Thank you. Ridiculous. Thank you. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Peter trying to make nice with Lou. I guess now that he has the escape plan, he needs all the help he can get. So is that what that was? I couldn't tell or whether he, I, I assumed he was trying to set Lou up for something. But no, he's just he's fine now. Between the scenes that we just saw, he's suddenly fine again. Hey, Lou, I need you to help be the media with me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. apparently the plan. Well, it's also like they actually don't need his help for anything either, right? No. Like if this movie was remotely well written, they'd be like, oh, you know, he's the only one who has access to the whatever. But no, it's like you're the other named character, Lou. So I want you to be my friend now. Yeah. You're a Christian, right? Cool. You're in the plot with us. Great. He's not, though. Lou's he's not. not. He's an atheist. Very, very important. Mm. Everybody's an atheist at this point. Of Everybody's a Christian eventually. Right. Well, not <laughs> Lou. The point of the movie. No, Lou dies a <laughs> cowardly fucking atheist. He really does. Yeah. So, the, but then Peter goes to talk more shit to Tanu. So there's this, they, like, they clearly want to establish Captain Tanu as this very scary, evil character, but they never do. 
right? They, they just always sort of just act like they've already done that. And Peter is constantly talking shit to him. And the movie seems to think that this is a, like a, oh, he's had enough and he's finally, you know, going to go up against this very intimidating character. But because they never bothered to make the character intimidating, it just looks like Captain Tan is a real pushover that Peter can talk shit to whenever he wants to. Yeah, absolutely. And they also, like, they try to make out. We're supposed to think that the prison is this, like, horrible hellhole that he's barely surviving in. But they don't establish that either. And, like, the door to his cell is always open. He can just come and go as he please. There's lots of outside mm -hmm. time. He's got bunks in the cell. He's got, like, bunk beds in the cell. But he doesn't have a cellmate. So he's got a nope. private cell in quite a reasonable open prison, basically. Yeah, and every single scene with him or any other prisoner is shot outdoors. So mm. yeah, because they didn't have the lighting, obviously. But but like so, it, <laughs> but it just seems like they get to spend about fourteen hours a day wandering around the quad. Yeah, yeah. Lou even has an like an ensuite bathroom in yes itself. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Yep. It was actually that led to a funny moment because the actor playing well, everybody terrible actors. The one playing Lou, his bad acting manifested in the form of it seemed like he had to take a shit like he was mm. just about to take a shit that whole time <laughs> that Peter was talking to him and he doesn't want to talk he just wants to get it over okay, okay, yeah. I'm Media, about to, I don't know sure well get, I'm gonna just, just, they only give me one jumpsuit and I don't want to shit in it man what say it <laughs> yeah. again quick okay I forgive you so yeah but then they, like so he dares Tanu to shoot him he's like Tanu's like I could shoot you right now and he's like this is you're gonna shoot me this the whole the mm. name of the movie is the firing squad man I'm not worried about that. Uh, and then there's a voiceover, and I love the voiceover because he says, how I survived those first few months is beyond me. So yeah, it's beyond me too. You were sentenced to death in 30 days. How yeah. you survived any month is beyond me. <laughs> right. I survived based on title cards that didn't really make sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so the, the, the voiceover's like, yeah, nothing could save me now except perhaps a savior. <laughs> and then we get this ridiculous fucking scene so him and Lou uh, and, and the other prisoners are being led along in a line by the guards and, and of course there's always 16 guards per prisoner so there's a guard right next to him and he's going like hey Lou do you want to try to escape with me and Cuba Gooding Jr. <laughs> hey man it's so do you know what whispering is we're two feet away <laughs> from the guard they're looking at us it, it, it's the guard saying that to him hey guys do you know what whispering is yeah right <laughs> <laughs> But the guards hear the dumb plan and they're like, yeah, whatever. We're just going to ignore yeah, that. It's, it's, <laughs> no, yeah, the, the plan is be the media. Yeah. So then, so we get the scene where Peter and Lou meet with Cuba and he explains the plan, right? <laughs> uh, so I'm sorry. First, Lou goes to shake his hand. He's like, don't shake my hand. They'll think we're planning something. I'm like, I guarantee you they wrote that line after Cuba was like, nobody gets to touch me. Yes. <laughs> in this movie. But the next one after that, he says very, very loudly, what's the plan? Like top of his voice. Like, well, now yes. they're going to think you're planning something. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he's like, we'll just walk right out of there and pretend we're the media. And he's like, "Clear, there has to be more to the plan. He's like, there is not more to the plan. <laughs> <laughs> So he's like, he's like, but they know us. They know who we are. He's like, no, they've got a new guy working gate duty. And he's like, I don't think they would let the new guy on letting people out duty, right? Especially not by himself, which we'll find out he isn't by himself. No. There's like eight guards. So did they bring in an entire eight guard new squadron into their 12 guard system? And then put all eight of them, all eight of the new guys on the letting people out duty. It's so yeah. fucking weird. Kuba's like, don't worry, they're going to think they flew in a helicopter with me that almost crashed and they're going to think I'm not the prisoner. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I look like that. So, and then, but then, of course, the movie has to address like, hey, why would you help us in this way? He's like, I want a million dollars and I know that Peter has it. And he goes, oh, sure. Before we get the million dollars, when he says to Kuba Gooding Jr., well, what are you getting out of helping us? It's like, He's getting out of prison. He's <laughs> yes. off the death, death <laughs> roll. Like, yeah. That's what he's getting. <laughs> right. So now we get them sneaking out of prison. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the first time I ever cut class, they might as well be doing dive rolls. <laughs> they have a giant duffel bag and they're just serpentine running through this <laughs> yard together. And the duffel the bag the is day. pink. And yeah, it's the middle of the goddamn fucking 
<laughs> it's a flashy video game item. It's so silly. Yeah. <laughs> they open it. There's like a several full three-piece suits in there and ties. They start getting changed in the middle of the yard, right yes. out in the open, basically. Like anybody could be watching them as they just undress in the middle of the yard. Yes, exactly. That's the plan. Somehow, Cuba Gooding Jr. has gotten three suits the right sizes. Almost the right size. Well, has, yeah. Not quite the right sizes. <laughs> no, quite wrinkly as well. So they go to walk out and the guards are like, you should have um, press badges if you're press. And they're like, oh, we forgot our press badges. And the guards are like, well, if you forgot your press badges. Yes, that's, that's <laughs> totally enough. They're also they're having, they're having like a media conversation as well. And Cuba Gooding Jr.'s version of the media conversation is, so um, we're interviewing the president next and then uh, then we'll probably talk to the first lady. <laughs> so yeah, well, she's probably yes. going to be there. So well, we, right. we, we so might as well say get hi. A two for, get the two for while you're there. What are they going to do in Rogan after that? I don't know. We're media. <laughs> And these these prison guards are all not recognizing any of these people as prisoners who have been there for a while now. And they're just like, yeah, you know, you're all wearing any suit with sneakers and no shoelaces, you know, like the media. Okay, you can leave. And they just walk out. Well, and he's like, yeah, right. So, and, and he's like, well, I, you're not on the list. And I'm like, yeah, because you probably would have noticed those three men walking in too, right? <laughs> and he goes, you're not on the list. And he goes, well, we all have names. He goes, I don't know about that. And he says three names. He goes, well, if you said three names, you're probably good to go. And then they walk by 37 people. And one of them, one of the guards in the background, it's a really small moment. Like they're all dressed in combat fatigues apart from one guy who's dressed in like a burgundy outfit, like he's a, <laughs> a sci-fi sea captain. Like he's come dressed <laughs> as M. Bison and he's just in the background for some reason. <laughs> so, so they get out of the prison and one of them might as well just yell, cheese it. It's right? the fucking, I laughed, <laughs> I laughed so goddamn hard and long at this moment because they all walk out of the gate and all of them just mumbling to each other like, don't start running Lulu, yet, don't start Lulu, running Lulu, Oh my God, you're running, 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 okay, okay, okay. And they run away. And then they all just break into a fucking sprint eight yeah. feet out of the bridge. Just dive into bushes there for no reason and then get back out of them and keep running. <laughs> But that's thing, there aren't any bushes. There's barely a gate. It's a chain link fence. It's completely transparent. All right. these guards are just watching them as yes. they run away. Just watch them run. Those media guys really want to get to Rogan, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. So and lo now, luckily, there is a truck right there with the keys in it. <laughs> so they just jump in that and then they drive away. And then so so they leave. And then we get the scene where like Tanu is yelling at the guards that let him go and he does some kind of violence to them off camera. He does. He starts that he starts berating them, but before he berating them, he's just he's given that one guard the silent treatment, like the silent <laughs> silent yeah. treatment, because you let my prisoners go. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I feel like he did a purple nurple or something. And then even this movie was like, all right, that was too silly. That was yeah, too yeah silly. right, gotta, right. Yeah. Just cut. Yeah. So but then we we cut to the three escapees. They're in Jakarta together. Yeah, they're, they're at the Seti Uber station, the, the subway station. We know that because the Chiron comes up and tells us. The Chiron does spell the name of the station wrong, which isn't a great start. <laughs> <laughs> the picture in the background is also not the station, which is an even worse start, I think. <laughs> Rough. But yeah, so they, but they, get, they get into the subway and they're like, hey, we made it. We're successful. We have escaped from prison. Hooray. And then the next stop, the cops get on and arrest them. And, and Morgan's with them as well. So like, because he, he played the same oh, right, escape, yes. pretending to be the media. So like somewhere, someone in the, in the system's like, wow, our prison system really is the focus of a lot of media retention this week. Really <laughs> something like, they're really interested in us. <laughs> so, but yeah, but everybody gets caught and sent back to prison. I mean, you know, you can't give them more death penalty. So fine, I guess, right? <laughs> But they take him back to prison and Tanu's going to break Peter this time, damn it. It's time for... Four days in solitary confinement, <laughs> which I'm sure is very unpleasant, right? Like, but it doesn't, it doesn't have Oh, that, it would be. Yeah. Oh, sure. Well, except that they, they take him to solitary confinement and there's other guys there. <laughs> ah, yeah. It's just a chain link <laughs> fence out in the middle of the lovely meadow where he can speak to all the other guys who are also in solitary confinement. Yes, because it's, yeah, right. They're all just separated by chain link fences. There's no... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. their social solitary confinement cells are genuinely larger than New York City apartments I've had. 
Yep. Like, yep. Really nice. Yep. Yeah. And then the captain can't stop walking back and forth talking to them as well, which again un- like undermines <laughs> the solitary nature. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's not solitary. It's not confinement. And it honestly, it seems a little better than the than the cell he was in. He doesn't have a mattress. <laughs> he's got to sleep on the concrete, which kind of sucks. But other than that, it seems pretty nice. I guess you could lean against that chain link. That probably, it's got some give to it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I guess he's got a shit in the corner, though. There's no bathroom. <laughs> That's going to suck. So, but then we cut to like two days before the arrest, because this movie has to have something happening in it again, Right. So this time we're in Singapore. Yeah. So like three days before the arrest, they were in LA. Yes. Five days they were in Indonesia. Now they're in Singapore two days. Like how were they just not jet lagged? Like while they're in prison, they're still going to be jet lagged from this. It's going to take a while for that jet lag to fade. They were using using up those miles on the Amex. They were going to expire. Right. Well, yeah. Right. So, but yeah. So the two of them are talking about getting buddy houses or whatever. And Morgan is like, hey, man, I'd like to have a conversation about how dangerous our profession is and how we're almost certainly going to get caught at some point. Because yeah, he's like, this is this is my last one. It's, oh, he was one drug run away from retirement. That's, yes. that's the worst, yeah. Yeah, and Morgan's talking about how he's having second thoughts because he was raised Christian. Uh-huh. But Peter's like, God doesn't exist, idiot. What are you talking about? He says, in fact... <laughs> that's the point of the scene. Quote, God's an urban legend. A myth. <laughs> An urban legend. Urban legend? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but he doesn't believe in God, damn it. And then we get another Chiron that says solitary confinement, day three. And this is where Tanu walks up and he's like, food. And then Peter's like, oh, good food. And he's like, psych, no, no food for you. And yeah, he wants to have fun around here. You know, we, we, we run a fun ship. Tight ship. He takes out the food, fixes his hair, but now he spills the slop on his head. Oh, <laughs> Should have done the other hand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but then somebody comes through and gives him a Bible. Now, I believe this is supposed to be Kevin Sorbo's character, but they only yeah. had four scenes with Kevin Sorbo and one of them wasn't handing him a Bible through this gate. Right. Yes. So we just see a hand to hand him a Bible. And this is this is a big relief to him because he was just saying, I felt like crying and screaming, but nobody could hear me. It's like you're you're in a chaining cell with people wandering by. There's someone stood right next to you right now. They can yes. all hear you. There's nothing yeah. to stop the sound getting out. Right, right. But this is where they he finds God. And I love this so much because they've just spent all this time talking about four days in, in solitary confinement with no food and no water, that would break anyone. Your mind will be broken by this. It would be impossible for your mind not to be broken. And so he finds Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Christianity totally makes sense if your mind is being broken in solitary <laughs> confinement and being starved. That is the point so- we just made in our Christian movie. Yeah, but he goes, he's like, I loved the Bible. I read John 3.16. Man, what a Bible. <laughs> yeah, all, all the hits. Went through all the, all the hits. He reading montage so quickly that the shadows on the trees in the background don't even move. So like, <laughs> through this whole montage, he's been reading that book for maybe four minutes tops. <laughs> Something like that. Well, he was just flipping straight to John 3.16 because yeah, yeah, that's right, an exciting right. well, yeah, he famous He knows that's one. where the, the good stuff is. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, but so he gets out of solitary confinement and he goes straight to the chapel to listen to Pastor Kevin Sorbo tell him about Jesus. This prison chapel looks like the chapel from every Christian movie that you've ever made me watch, which to mm-hmm. be fair, tracks, that completely tracks. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. But I guess Kevin Sorbo is going to be executed next month, but he's cool with that because of Jesus, right? And he, he explains that in his sermon and then he's like, hey, anybody want to become... Christian and Peter's like, yeah, no, it's the, we're in Act Two now, so I can do that. Yeah, and, and to be fair, I assume from looking at Kevin Sorbo's faith that he'd already gotten the electric chair, but it just hadn't taken. That's, that's, I assume <laughs> what happened. Yeah, they're gonna have to try a, a firing squad this time. Yeah, yeah. Peter slowly walks up for the altar call, and it's supposed to be this big deal. But I really wanted him to be like, no, no, of course, I was just fucking with you. I know, <laughs> just messing with Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> you look like leather. But yeah, he cries his way into Jesus. But now when he walks outside, he sees clouds or something. So he knows it's all going to be all right, I guess. So, okay. So now he's being marched along and he's like deep in its abiding piece of salvation or whatever. When Lou says, hey, man, how was solitary? He's like, yeah, well, it wasn't great, but it's okay because I became... Or sorry, no, let, let me give you the exact fucking quote here. Quote, I'm not going to lie to you, Lou. It was real bad. 
But at the same time, enlightening. <laughs> also, it wasn't real bad. It was it was relatively fine. It, you were in a lovely little meadow. You had a lovely breeze going on. You had people to chat to. It was fine. Captain Tanu spilled slop on his head by accident. That was fun. I don't know. So, okay. Then we fast forward to two months later. Remember how Pastor Sorbo was going to get killed in a month? <laughs> so, <laughs> don't worry about that. Don't. You know, it's, so it's two months later. The Chirons never know what's going on. But he's all the way Jesus now. And this is where Kuba Gooding Jr. shows back up to tell us that he is also all Jesus stuff. That happened off camera somewhere. It yep. is. Yeah. So this is the moment of him being like, so yeah, congrats on uh, on Christ, Peter. Um, same for me, by the way. We're I think are we Christ buddies right now? I think we're Christ buddies. <laughs> yeah. And Cuba Gooding Jr. says, the Bible, it's like mind <laughs> it blown. Does. That was the line they gave this Oscar winning actor to deliver. <laughs> The Bible is like, <laughs> oh, so fucking sad. But yeah, but he's super happy that he found Jesus now. And he explains that he found Jesus the same day that his dad died of a heart attack. And his dad was a pastor, right? So it's kind of ironic or something if you think about it. How did he find that out? Like how do we do yeah. it with his, his his regular phone call home from Indonesia nope. from the hell prison? Like there's no way that he would have found that out. We've established that they don't get any communication with the outside yeah. several fucking times. Yeah. They set up a business center and you could Skype if you want, I think is what <laughs> happened. So we found out. So then the love interest comes marching into the movie. Into the prison, no less. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. So this is Miriam. She's just allowed to hang out in the prison as she sees fit. From now on in the movie, we're going to find out later that she brings in a wardrobe of clothes to yes. have, you know, for changes, that kind of thing. Yep. Sometimes you get sweaty during the first part of your day at the prison. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Certainly the color of her clothes change. Everything. It's the same dress, but it in is like five different it's colors. It's so fucking weird. It's the exact same goddamn dress in five yeah. different colors. Thank you, Marsh. That weirded me out so goddamn much. She's bought a job lot at, Ma at Matalan. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> to, to pack, they come in a five pack. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, in the writing that we've come to expect from this movie, when Peter first meets her, he says, the voiceover says, she was so beautiful and angelic. <laughs> so, yeah. and, then, and then he walks up to her. So he's like, yeah, I saw her. And she walks past. Him. And then he like runs to catch up with her. And he's like, hey, do, do you come here often? So like, Fuck. <laughs> I would like to flirt with you now. Well, and she goes, you're the American, right? Now, we haven't mentioned this to this point, but no, he's not. No, but she is. <laughs> yes, yes, she's American. She's listening to his British accent. She goes like, so are you Are you uh, American or what? <laughs> what? Also, the American. We know Cuba Gooding Jr. is also in this prison. So, <laughs> arguably, he's the American, if anyone. Are you the white American? Well, and based on accents, so is Lou, yeah. Yeah, and the captain, yeah. Right, yeah, <laughs> Captain Tano as well. <laughs> so, he goes, so, so hey, you're, um, you're a woman and not a prisoner. What are you doing here? She goes like, oh, I come in to pray over all the prisoners. And, and he's like, oh, well, they just let you do that. <laughs> and, and she goes, apparently they let me do that. Now, I, I, and I guarantee, and, and, and he's like, and this is what I fell in love with her. And I guarantee you what really happened in real life, of course, of course, this is based on a true story, is that he met this girl and then became a Christian, right? Oh, 100%. Yeah, that's sure. the direction of travel. Yeah. Yeah. He says, so I sure I am a big fan of your your savior. And she goes, yeah. Wow. So you're on death row, huh? And I'm like, why, <laughs> why would you bring that up right now? Lady, any other subject, any other fucking subject. Have you heard about John 316? <laughs> it's have pretty you, cool. Have you been to a sporting event since 1968? So <laughs> It's like, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then he asks her out on a date and she goes like, I'm not allowed to date prisoners. Oh, that was the best. But he asked her, he's like, would you care to get lunch with me sometimes? That where, like in the, the prison cafeteria, in the yes, Indonesian well, yes, prison really. hall. You're gonna, do you want to share a plate of slop with me sometimes? Yes, or there's hardly any bugs in it. Yeah. <laughs> like so, genuinely as a joke, while they're talking here, I was like, okay, so uh, you want to get out of here? <laughs> and then <laughs> the next line, he says, so do you want to get some lunch sometime? Yes, and I was yeah. like, wow. All right. 
Wonder what that meant in real life. I guess they had comments, you know, lunch yeah. together in the, the prison. They didn't, though. She said no. She turned mm-hmm. him down. So then the fucking Chirons again. We jumped three months hence. Yeah. It's now been six months since we learned that Kevin Sorbo was going to die in a month and he's still not dead. It's now been like a year and a half since we learned that our main character, Peter, was going to die in a month and he's still alive. Yeah. Right. We, we knew that Lou had like two months left. I had a month left of it, basically from the last time. So now, presumably Lou's now been dead for two months and I hope that comes up. You'd hope that someone's like, oh, remember that time they executed Lou? They haven't yet. They nope. haven't yet got around to it. He's no. still alive. Yeah. So, but now three months later, Peter is so Christian that he's leading the chapel services, right? <laughs> he's giving the I'm okay with dying speech. And I'm like, what? Weird that you're appealing your sentence still, huh? Yeah, I guess you're going to be super <laughs> bummed if you get pardoned now. Huh? <laughs> But now, but he's so good at this. A bunch of people, by which I mean two, are coming up to the altar. We're playing the coming to the altar song again. Yeah. Also, he gets a big round of applause. There are like maybe 12 people in this room. The audio of the applause is 50 times. It's the Carnegie Hall. The yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it continues after everybody stops clapping as well. <laughs> Everyone's hands are still, the applause is still going on. <laughs> and then we get this scene with Tanu and Miriam, the love interest. Where, where Tanya's like, what is this Christian bullshit y'all are doing anyway, right? Where she tries to explain how Christianity is great and he explains that religion is awful and he hates it and it's stupid, <laughs> you know? And, and like, it, to his it, credit, Tanya makes a great point. He's like, hey, you know, your God lets me kill a lot of his people <laughs> for a victimless crime. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, well, you know, God is love. And he's like, I don't believe in love. That's bullshit. It's like, what, he doesn't believe in love? That's an insane thing. And the reason is because his wife died of cancer, which is the second time cancer has been yes, used to we- like, win an argument in this. <laughs> but like, dead wife means he no longer believes that love exists. So like, does he not love her anymore? Does he think love never existed? And so there was never a thing between them? Like, what is his belief system at this point? Right, right. He goes, that's, and again, this is an absolute goddamn direct quote from this movie. He says, that's why there is no God. That's why believing in God is stupid. Love is stupid. (laughs) End (laughs) quote. (laughs) And then she's like, well, actually, you know, I have a Bible passage for you for just such an occasion. It's John 14, 27. And she reads it to me and I, I, it's meaningless. I could not Mm. figure out what the fuck that was supposed to even be saying. Right. And the the direction here is for Captain Tanu to almost start weeping with Christ's love at John 14, 27, but then be like, (laughs) and he catches himself. (laughs) He stays stays atheist for the rest of Act Two. Right. Yes, exactly. And then we get this falling in love with Miriam montage, which includes like sitting in a circle while she plays guitar. Yeah, which is legitimately worse than his time in solitary. Like 100% oh, yeah. worse. I was watching her. Her chords are all one finger on one string and then <laughs> strum all six strings. And I really want the actual audio. Of what was yes. going on. Flang, flang, flang. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we also learn after this montage that Lou refuses to love Jesus, right? Lou will not be a Christian despite all of Peter's best efforts. And then the Chiron comes up and tells us that it is 14 hours before Lou and Lindbrook's ex- execution. Now, I'd forgotten who Lindbrook was. That's Case. Yeah, me that's, too. <laughs> yeah, that's Kevin Sorbo. Now, it is not 14 hours before, because they because right after the Chiron says 14 hours before the execution, they come and they tell Lou, hey, you're going to be executed tomorrow night. It's the middle of the day. Mm. There, There is no time where you are 14 hours shy of tomorrow night. No, absolutely not. (laughs) Even if it wasn't daytime outside and it is. (laughs) So Peter's like, oh man, if you're going to die so soon, you got to love Jesus. And he's like, he refuses. And he goes, yeah, why would a loving God let any of this exist? And he's like, oh, right. I was like, the movie? Yeah, totally get it. (laughs) (laughs) So he's like, yeah, you know, as I understand it, your savior would be like, super against the death penalty of all things, right? Like he would probably be most mad about that. And like, no, it's, right. apparently he's all, he's fine. Oh, and this is, this is when Peter says, well, we all have the death penalty, mm-hmm. but then we can meet God. So, you know, it's a, it's a death gift. It's a death investment opportunity that you can't afford not to buy. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, but Lou is unconvinced. And then the voiceover is like, but who knows? Maybe he turned Christian the instant before he got killed. We can't tell for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> So then we see we we see how K Sorbs is feeling about his upcoming execution, right? Peter goes to check on him, and the Chiron comes up and it says ten hours to the execution. It's not. It's the again. No, it's it's, it's the next goddamn night. But K Sorbs is good, right? He's like, I'm actually just fine. The only thing I'm worried about is who's going to take over my church ministry. I want you to do it. Yeah, and I wanted uh, Pete to be like, well, I mean, I'd rather get pardoned and get out of prison. To be honest, that's why I'm talking about this. I want to. I'm trying to take here. Yeah. And Peter's like, yeah, fucking obviously it would be me. He's like, oh, okay. And then he goes, <laughs> oh, hey, you know what, Kevin Sorbo? I've never, it, it occurs to me now that I've never asked what you were in jail for in the first place. And Kevin Sorbo's character goes, well, my wife flirted with another man, so I murdered her. You could Why have made it something a crazy I don't detail know. like that. I you can write so many things. Well, <laughs> so look, it's based on a real guy. Right. So that's probably what they felt like they were that. Well, we have to make it the thing that he actually did. But if that's the case and you want to bring it up, you have to bring that up really early in the movie and then give us time to see, oh, look what a changed man is. You can't have him say, oh, I actually murdered my wife for flirting with another man and then expect me in the next scene to be sympathetic to this character. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. BT dubs. Big stabbing. Big stabbing of a lady. <laughs> anyway, uh, my arc begins now. I <laughs> guess. <laughs> And then we get Miriam checking on Peter. She's like, oh, so I, I saw that um, these other two people were going to get killed. And I wanted to know how you felt about that. I wanted to comfort you about their deaths. And this is where we introduce, and this is going to become, I guess, the plot of the movie from this point on. The fact that Miriam never cries. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's a stoic. Yeah. Peter's like, you know, it's okay if you if you cry. And she says, oh, you're overestimating my acting ability. I don't. <laughs> I don't cry. <laughs> But no, but she 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 says at this point, no, my dad told me not to cry. So I never, ever cry at any point in the movie. She's like, you're going to cry at the very end of the movie. She's like, no, I'm not. I'm not. That's though. such an insane thing. It's like she pinky swore she wouldn't cry then and yes. never has. Like, I don't like with this lady, you have to make your uh, your the promises time bound. Otherwise, she'll take it literally forever. <laughs> right. Could you hold this a second? Could you hold this for me? She'll hold it forever. You've got to say, can you hold this for a minute? Otherwise, yeah, right. she'll never <laughs> let go of something. <laughs> All right. Well, I've been assured that someone's at least going to die in an upcoming scene. So we, we're going to call that the end of act two. And I'm going to give act three the hard sell. Will God intervene and save Peter and Cuba? What would be the point of the fucking movie if he didn't? <laughs> Why the fuck would you even make this thing if he didn't? Find out the answers to one of those questions when we return for the <laughs> yeah. just kill him already conclusion of the firing squad. So how are you feeling, Pastor Limbrook? I feel good. I'm ready to stand beside Jesus and welcome eternity. That's great. Hey, you know, it occurs to me, I never actually asked you why you were in this prison in the first place. Oh, that. Yeah, well, the truth is that one time I saw my wife flirting with another man and I flew into such a jealous rage that I murdered her. Oh, wow. Oh, um, yeah, I, I was expecting something a little less disturbing. I'm not finished yet. No? Well, um, once she was dead, I also had to kill the bastard she was flirting with, obviously. Uh, I, I don't think had to is the right and phrase. And let me that. tell you, I did not let him go slow. I made that mistake with my wife. Didn't want to do that again. Okay, um, yeah, I'm gonna... And then, gonna, mm -hmm. once I had their corpses at my disposal, well, I decided to send a message at that point. So I carved up their bodies and mailed the pieces to the four corners of the earth as a warning to others. Right. That's very um, biblical. And then, and then, shh, stop interrupting. When I realized that I was looking at a death penalty anyway, I started to think about all the vengeance I could take between that moment and the one where they finally captured me. So I went on what can only be described as a bloodthirsty rampage. And after that, well, that's when I started thinking about all those filthy Youngling, I'm gonna go. So, I'm gonna go. Don't worry. Um, Jesus did forgive me, so I get to go to heaven. Yeah, not actually helping. Though. Fun fact: my wife was agnostic at the time, so she is actually burning in hell. And I'm not Christian anymore. <laughs>
And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to reopen the action with Tanu relishing his chance to tell Lou that he did not, in fact, get his last minute pardon. He's going to get executed tomorrow night. Again, this happened after the 10 hour Kai runs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Warden Tanu comes over to Lou's cell to announce this to him to be like, you're definitely getting executed. And then he just walks away and the warden needed an escort of six guys marching in formation with assault rifles yep. to just go say that mm -hmm. and then walk away. And then he forgets that they're going to march away. So he starts to walk and then he stops himself. And then he's like, <laughs> one, march, two, two three. three. Well, okay. okay. So we have not have even mentioned this yet. And shame on us. It's been a long episode already, but we have not mentioned that these guards are constantly carrying fucking machine guns. Yes. And they're constantly pointing them at each other and at Captain <laughs> Tucker. They're, like, they're mostly down, but they're always pointing at each other's shins and feet and shit. It's just awesome. If you just watch this movie simply for how many times they almost shoot each other's feet off, it's amazing. Just trying to get a raspberry seed out of the muzzle, but like it's a lot of <laughs> ridiculous with work their with teeth. the guns. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's why they needed to bring in like seven or eight new guards at the same time that they had <laughs> so many casualties. <laughs> that it could be sense. it. Yeah, no, none of them can walk, it turns out. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And and he says to Lou, he's like, so do you, any special request? He's like, no. He's like, no last meal. Then he's like, well, I want to eat. And he goes, like, nope, <laughs> too late. No take backs. And then they they march off. <laughs> I don't feel like in Indonesian prison, they get you get like to request a special meal for your last meal. Like, what I really want you is don't get room service. three beef and cheeses. <laughs> <laughs> and <You> sparkling could... <laughs> water. <please. Yeah. laughs> some, some stuffed dates. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. But Peter shows up. He walks in like immediately after Tanu because you're allowed to go wherever you want in this prison and talk to whoever you want whenever you want to. <laughs> and he goes, Lou, this is your last chance to love Jesus. And Lou's like, no, I won't exist after tomorrow because I'm an atheist and don't believe in a soul. <laughs> so he tries to give Jesus that one last hard sell. He's just putting Jesus into his hands. Being yeah, like, right, oh, right. It feels right. really, really yeah. good. You what do I need to do to put you into Jesus right walk now? Walk <laughs> around with the Jesus a little bit and just see how he, see how he feels. So, but, but here's the thing, like, like from an atheist perspective, right? My take on this is just imagine being poor Lou who is about to die and his only friend in the world will talk to him about nothing but Jesus. Yeah. Right, like the only goddamn thing. And then and the pastor comes and pesters him about it too. So like everybody's running around pestering him about Jesus. He has to spend his last hours of fucking life worrying about this, all this goddamn Jesus shit. Oh, poor fucking guy. So yeah, so then we, we watch how they can't afford a very good rain filter in this film. <laughs> oh, this establishing shot is Ooh. the yeah. fucking greatest. They, they do an establishing shot of night... Then morning, then 6 p.m. So that, yes. you know, we're led through the concept of time days. And now yes. we know where we are. <laughs> well, and, and the Chiron comes up and it's like 6 p.m. And I'm like, you haven't told us when the execution is, guys. Like 6 p.m. <laughs> doesn't matter to us. Presumably that's close to the execution. But we don't know how close. Yeah, it could be anywhere for up to five hours from now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. It's sometime tonight, we know. So it, I guess maybe it's, if we see someone in the background eating a meal, we'll know it's dinner. Now, <laughs> I just, it's so funny. Okay, so again, somebody was being paid by the Chiron. So now they like they take Lou and K Sorbs out of their cells for like I guess you know, to walk the mile. And Lou, who is an atheist, is acting like a real fucking sissy about it. Oh, he's so sure weak, is. this guy who doesn't want to die. Wah, 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 <laughs> come on. I mean, this movie could not, because again, this is based on a real guy. This movie could not be more disrespectful to this one human being where they're just like, and he was just a whiny bitch about it. K Sorbs, on the other hand, he's like, yeah, no, it's time. It's time. I'm I'm fine with it. Oh, yeah. K Sorbs like slowly shakes everyone's hands, says goodbye, and dies with a dignity that his Twitter account will never have. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. It's just, yeah, just going to everybody, firm handshake. Lock eyes, very calm. Namaste. Yep. And then he's about to get killed. Like a fucking politician leaving a stage. Yeah. Yes. But not Lou, because this is what happens when you're a drug dealer for a long time and then you're about to get executed and you're not Christian yet. Yep. This is what happens. Yep. 
So, and then it says, it, it comes around and it's like, it, the Chiron tells us it's now 730 and they're just getting these prisoners to the shooting wall. <laughs> it's an hour and a half walk to the shooting wall? <laughs> Why would it be that? <laughs> Because they have to take a detour via Hong Kong the last time. <laughs> <laughs> they got to come over the mountains to get to China. Yeah. In order, yeah. So, but they get to the shooting wall an hour and a half later. The firing squad comes up. The firing squad is all of the guards. Like everyone yes, yes. is such a big firing squad. <laughs> yes. There's 13 of them. Yeah. So, and, and Lou's like, come on, guys. Really? Are we really going through with this? And they're like, yeah, man, we're totally going through with this. So they give him a blindfold. Because he's a sissy. Case Orbs doesn't need no blindfold. He can look right into those guns because he's got the power of Christ <laughs> compelling him. Right? So, And they're like, do you have any last words? And he's like, no. And I'm like, first of all, you didn't even give Lou a last word attempt. But also, if I was going to be executed, I feel like I thought in this moment, I would be more worried about nailing the last words than being executed. So I, I think I, I could agree with that, but I also wonder, like, what's the the limit on that? Like, could you have a lot of last words? Could you just like oh, fill a book yeah. through execution by just going on? I do not like green eggs and ham. <laughs> so well, right, we no... gotta set up like a cloture thing for this. Yeah, this keeps happening. <laughs> yeah so they they go to shoot Lou ducks. <laughs> and they're like, take it like a man. And I'm like, this is how a man <laughs> takes getting murdered. I'd hide behind mm. K-Sorps, right? I'd get behind them and make them drag me out from there. But then the VO comes up and they shoot them. They, they shoot the two of them. And the VO comes up and says, K-Sorps went straight to heaven. We all know where Lou went. <laughs> so, yeah. As he was yelling, you know, there's not enough evidence for God. <sighs> And yeah. he dies, yeah. a- atheistly. Yeah, is this where we like cut to Peter and he's like crying about it? Because his mm-hmm. crying is incredible. He's crying four tears simultaneously from each eye. They're running <laughs> down his cheeks all at the same time, like condensation on a window. He, lo- <laughs> he looks like a wax candle melting. That's how bad his, uh, how fake his crying is. Yeah, they also make sure to show us that Kevin Sorbo died with a Bible in his hand. Yep. <laughs> Very sure. important. I really wanted the Bible to have stopped the first bullet and then be like, fuck, okay, see, this keeps, this keeps <laughs> happening. <laughs> That's why we can't let him have that. So, <laughs> and then after the execution, Tanu stops by Peter's cell to tell him what a sniveling coward Lou was about dying, right? But he's like, k Sorbs though, died pretty awesome. He was pretty fucking Hercules about it, if you don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I am an ardent atheist, but that was hard for me to reconcile. I am starting to turn in my thing. I don't know. Yes. I don't know. So, so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Seriously, Captain Tanu's entire part, the entire script for him is Christian writer winning a fight in the shower against himself in the voice of Captain Tanu. That's yes, all he really. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, and this is also the part where Tan is like, hey, hey, tell you what, if you deny Christ, I'll let you go from the prison. Huh? Why deny would Christ? you believe him? Even if that was a genuine offer, why would he possibly believe him? Given right. that he's meant to be like the evil guy. Well, and also if it was true, if it was a real offer, what a fucking idiot Peter is. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like, you know, you, you deny Christ and then you, you apologize later. Christ is all into that forgiveness shit. Yeah, right? you're allowed to do last second stuff. You're allowed to do loopholes. Absolutely. Yeah, all the way. Yeah. No, but Peter's like, nah, I'm good. Feeling good. <laughs> and Captain Tony's is like, huh, you've <laughs> passed my ruse test you have. Yep. I might need to rethink my philosophy. Time for conditioner. I wrote that. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut to Jakarta where Miriam is pleading with Eric Roberts, the consul, to do something about Peter's sentence to get it commuted or, or something, right? Again, they label this like the embassy of the USA in Jakarta. And again, that is a building you can Google and it looks nothing like that. Do they think we can't Google? Why wouldn't they just have a picture of that, right? Like yeah. they couldn't get rights to the US embassy <laughs> in Jakarta? <laughs> What the fuck is happening? But Eric Roberts is like, no, you know, I spoke directly with the Indonesian president. And I'm like, wow, having Eric Roberts speaking on your behalf doesn't probably help. And he's like, yep, nope, it didn't help. No dice. Yeah. And Eric Roberts, he also says, yeah, Indonesia have a zero zero drug tolerance policy. And it's like, yeah, he says that with a tone of of a man speaking from experience about Indonesia (laughs) as well. (laughs) Feels like this was also Eric Roberts just there being shot, not knowing he was in the movie for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
So, but yeah, right, right. They just show up and ask him about commuting the sentence of some prisoner. He's like, yeah, I can probably do that. I'm Eric Roberts. <laughs> I'll touch the president of Indonesia. I have this laptop by Commodore from 1991. <laughs> I'll use that. Yeah, he says, uh, I've, I've heard only good things about him. I mean, other than the drug smuggling, right? You have heard that bit as well. Right, right. So I think most of the stuff that he's been sentenced to is pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, she, she's like, he's a changed person. I'm like, well, you know, he's been in prison. Everybody changes in prison. She goes, it, it would Amnesty, Amnesty International help? And he goes, no, they're not Christians. No, it's a bunch of fucking heathens. <laughs> So then we cut to uh, the Chiron tells us it's two days before Peter's execution. You you take that with a grain of fucking salt at this point, right? We don't know when it is in relation to his execution. But this is the part where that we see like the execution, the firing squad practicing on their execution mannequins. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. they definitely do that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Question. Doesn't it seem like you'd put clothing on the mannequins if you were going to do the firing squad practice? That would seem weird to me. It would seem weird if they dressed. It would seem really weird to dress them. Oh, that would make it weirder for you. Yeah. I think it would be yeah. weirder. Yeah. Because they're just mannequins. Like they're just plastic until you start dressing them up and like drawing little mustaches on them. And things. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. G- giving them like speech bubbles talking about their kids. <laughs> okay, well, please don't kill me. <laughs> that is what I was thinking. And now I feel like you're making fun of it. Okay. That's All fine. right. So. There are eight men in the firing squad practicing shooting and there are nine bullet holes in the mannequin. Yeah. Just point that out. <laughs> yeah, one of the guys is two fist in it. You know, he's uh... <laughs> so yeah, but but they shoot the fuck out of the mannequins, and then meanwhile, Peter is praying like he never prayed before. Don't worry, it won't matter. They're going to murder him. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. And Miriam is there praying with him, and, and he's praying that he won't be sad and all wussy like Lou was. And they just sat outside in the grass on like yep. some chairs that they've taken out. It, what kind of like Indonesian death prison do you get to have prayer dates with your lover who works there? Yes. Yeah. They're like feeding each other grapes slowly. <laughs> yeah. And, like, eating beef and cheese. <laughs> yeah. And, and Tanu's over there going like, what are they praying? That's dumb. It's stupid. <laughs> Fucking dumb prayer. So yeah, but, but we get that. And we get some news coverage of the plot. The, the, the news reporter, the, at one point, the news anchor goes, how are the prisoners, Suzanne? And Suzanne goes, they're going to, they're killing a man in a day. What, what are you, why were you asking me that? But she's like, no, actually, bad. they're, they're, they're bad. <laughs> Unless they're Christian. Right. And then she goes, actually, no, you know what? They're Christian. So they're just fucking fine. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess it's not sad then. And then the Chiron says it's the day of the execution. But from what the reporter just said, it already was the day of the execution. <laughs> we cut from the morning of the execution to 10 a.m. Day of, of the execution. execution. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So, In but Los then, Angeles. California. <laughs> and California. So then, okay, this is where Peter proposes. He wants to marry Miriam before he gets executed. Right. It would be amazing if she said no. <laughs> That'd be the greatest thing. Said, no, you're getting killed in like half a day. This would be a waste of my time. Oh, I'm <laughs> yours, really. I'm yours. I wanted her to be like, yeah, you know what? That's actually pretty convenient for me. That fits my lifestyle. Yes, let's do that until <laughs> TikTok, what? 12 hours max? Yeah, cool. yeah, 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 yeah. max. <laughs> no, I, so I, I wanted him to get like pardoned then. And then be like, and be like hey, did, that didn't. Yeah, count right. It was, it was, it was, gonna... <laughs> so, but but no. So, but they they're gonna get married. So, and th- but she's like, but before we get married, you have to know my the real reason I can't cry. And he's like, why would I have to know that? She's like, this is my last chance to tell this story. Oh, okay. So she's like, you know, when my dad was when I was a kid, my dad killed himself, and my mom said, don't cry, and so I never have. And he's like, well, that's the same story you told me before, but with your mom instead of your dad and slightly more detail. And she's like, yeah. And he's like, it's not impactful this time. She's like, really? I thought it would be impactful. Fuck. Yeah. And he's like, you do realize I'm dying in 12 hours. We're really cutting into that married time. Here yeah. in the <laughs> and then Eddie shows up and, and you might be asking yourself, who's Who? Eddie? Did they forget to mention this character, Eddie? And <laughs> in answer to those two questions, one, Eddie is the main character of the movie. And two, no, we haven't forgot to mention him. He just shows up for the first goddamn time in this scene. Yes. It's so crazy. He just walks up and they're like, ah, Eddie, so glad you walked up just now. This is convenient. You're a person named Eddie that we know. 
Marius, please. <laughs> yes. So I, I think we had seen Eddie before. He was in the scene where the captain is saying prayer is stupid. He's yes. saying that to Eddie. Yeah. Yes. Prisoner 5482. That's the only other time we've seen him. Yeah, yeah. right, right. He's been in the background <laughs> here and there, but he's never been yeah. named. He's had one line of dialogue. It was a throwaway, bad attempt at humor. That's yeah, exactly. it. If you go back, there's a bunch of blips like Tyler Durden of Eddie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, but Miriam runs off to find a ring. From the girls. From yep. the girls in prison. You know those prison girls who just yes. hang around in male prisons in <laughs> Indonesia. Yeah. And then, but but that's good because that gives uh, Peter time to have a heart to heart with Eddie. He thinks Eddie is ready to take over the prison ministry once he's gone. <laughs> and the rest of the goddamn movie is about whether or not Eddie is up to that challenge. Oh, I thought you were going to say whether or not Eddie's actor is up for delivering lines in the movie. <laughs> oh, no. Mm, he is not. He is not. Even just being told he's taken over the chapel, he goes through eight different attempts to act <laughs> surprised and happy. <laughs> it's so funny. He tries to start acting eight times. We watch that. Yep. It's like he's winding up as an old-timey pitcher to deliver lines, but then stopping, balking. Right. And doing that seven more times. Like, like, like he's trying to pull start an old lawnmower, but with acting. Yes. <laughs> so good. Right. It's fucking insane. And like, look, everyone in this movie is bad, except Cuba Gooding Jr., who is Cuba Gooding Jr. Like everybody else in this yeah. movie is terrible. But like every one of them, I wanted to apologize to him for the notes that I'd written when I saw how bad Eddie was. Right. Eddie looks like they just surprised him morning up. Right. Like the guy who was supposed to play that role had a heart attack and it was Eddie's fault. So he had to step in or something. <laughs> wow. It was bad. One of the militia cosplay guys shot another one by accident when they were like oh, fiddling with go. the muzzle of their guns. <laughs> Trying to pick something out of their teeth with it. Yeah. And then they get married. Now, look, this is again, this is a scene that it's almost hard to shoot this scene without it being emotionally charged, right? The two of them are about to get married hours before he's sentenced to die. And yet, because we've got Eddie in this scene just going like, wow, it's a wedding and I'm in a movie the whole time. There's no emotion <laughs> to it at all. Like this, honestly, it is no different than any other wedding scene, any till death to us part scene that you've seen in any other fucking movie. It's incredible. It's so fast because it, the line is like, we've got a wedding to do and we're done. And yep, we're done. And no, and yeah, I do. Yeah. And also, by the way, so they've been in this chapel in the prison over and over again. And yet they've decided to use this generic chapel green screen for the wedding scene. <laughs> that looks nothing like the church they've been in the whole day. Like they, they make it look like they just got married at the church down the fucking block. Yeah, they do. So, okay. So meanwhile, so Tanu is talking to one of the guards and he's very upset that Peter isn't more weepy and broken on the eve of his execution. And this is just a really small moment, but I love, the, I've loved, I've enjoyed the background work of all the extras in this throughout the entire movie. But this is my favorite bit of the background work because all of the prisoners, all of the extras, uh, as the as the scene starts, they're all like huddled in a group in the middle, uh, like in the background outside on the grass. And, and this is meant to be mm. their, their sort of yard time. Right. And so as the scene progresses, they all start wandering off in different directions because they've said they've said like, you know, and action, and they've all chosen a direction and walked in it. <laughs> but it sort of looks like you've just like unboxed, uh, you've taken the lid off a box of kittens and now they're all just going off and doing their own thing in the directions as they can. <laughs> It's amazing how many just very basic rules of filmmaking that they miss in this movie. It's yeah. fucking hilarious. Yeah. So, okay. So that night, Tanu stops by Peter's cell for a chat to tell him like, hey, man, I'm I'm genuinely going to miss you. you we, I think we've bonded over all of this time of me, you know, psyching you out with food and actually dumping it on my head and everything. <laughs> he actually says, we've had some great talks, you and I. <laughs> And like the whole point of this dumb liar scene that they wrote is like this Captain Tanu being like, you certainly pwned my atheism with facts and logic on quite the regular basis. Oh my God. <laughs> I have to admit that now. It was wow. off camera. We, we like, I'm sure the writer of this movie desperately tried to write any one scene where I won a fucking argument at any right. fucking point, but no, <laughs> never actually happened. Yeah, it's, it's this, he ends it by sort of saying, uh, you almost make me want to convert mm -hmm. to Christianity. But like, K. Sobs was in the prison for years and didn't tempt him into Christianity. So it just makes the point that Kevin Sobo was a shit Christian in right? this realm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then we get we get Peter giving his very last sermon. 
oh, there's there's one moment before that that I just have to mention. I think at one point they say like, oh, the entire media outside. The, the captain tells him, oh, the entire media is covering you outside. And I want the movie to cut to outside, and it's just Cuba Gooding Jr. It's all, in a wig. Yeah, it's all- <laughs> <laughs> <That's so much. laughs> The media, the, all of them look like Groucho Marx today. That's so <laughs> weird. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So, but yeah, but so speaking of Cooper Gooding Jr., so now Peter's going to give his very last sermon. And it, after that's over, he's going to do a song with Cuba. And the two of them are going to sing Amazing Grace together. <laughs> beautiful song. Truly beautiful. Yes. Song. One of the most beautiful songs yeah. ever fucking written. So I love this so goddamn much because Cuba Gooding Jr. is absolutely going for it. And the guy who plays Peter is singing it like, have you ever been like, you got your headphones in and you're singing and then like you realize somebody's there and you suddenly get way quieter and now you're singing like this. <laughs> yeah, he, he's singing it like a child at school assembly all having to sing the, the hymn, but don't yes, want to be right, there. It's right. that, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was almost like he was listening along to, to a song and he was worried that like, the N word was going to pop up in it, and Cuba Gooding Jr. was allowed to say it, but he was, he was like hedging, not saying well, they, everything. There's even a moment where where Cuba Gooding Jr. like he kind of breaks down for a second because he realizes that this is the last time he'll ever sing or whatever. And Cuba Gooding Jr. is a good enough actor that you see that that's what he's realizing. But mm. then he stops singing, and it's just Peter singing for just a second. He's like, "Amazing Grace, Cuba, God damn it, sing more, man! <laughs> You're really carrying this, brother." Yeah. <laughs> I also I also like that Miriam is there and she got the words wrong twice. Oh, did you really? And they show it twice. <laughs> they got to her just having like completely wrong mouth motion and they keep it. I don't know why. The entire congregation is mouthing something that isn't this song at all. <laughs> we'll just leave this in. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and there's also a lovely moment where like in that moment where he's, he's broken down and he starts again. There's a, a, a look from the congregation of like, oh, we're doing the second verse. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, twas grace uh, that caught, taught my heart oh, to pray, I guess. Verse? I didn't oh, know. No. Yeah. I thought it was just the theme song to a sitcom that I know. Shit. <laughs> So, so yeah, so they, they finished the song and everybody, there's not a dry eye in the house. Even the guards are all there and they're crying. And then Eddie comes up and he's like, wow, thank you for singing the last song that you'll ever sing in your entire lives for us. And it's like, dude, not the fucking time, Eddie. Jesus. It's the best. Because Eddie, yeah, Eddie's trying to do the thing where he's taking over the chapel now. And it goes so fucking badly. It's this beautiful, amazing grace moment. And then he's like, Hey, keep it going for Peter, who's about to get killed, right? <laughs> All right. Who wants to be a Christian? Come on up and be a Anybody? Christian. Nobody? Anybody? And nobody comes up and they just cut. Yep, that's it. So, okay. Then we get Miriam visiting him in his cell and they're praying. And all I'm saying is if I have my new wife in my prison cell before my execution. We're not doing goddamn fucking Bible study. <laughs> Jesus. And then, so, and, and he starts telling her fucking Bible verses and then Bible verses are on the Chirons now because the Chiron guy just would not stop. He was getting paid by the letter, 100%. It yeah. must be, yeah. It's yeah, John 3.16 p.m. now. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting paid by the letter. Could you quote something from Ecclesiastics? <laughs> <laughs> but then he's like, don't worry, God has a plan. And Miriam's like, I don't know that he does. And he's like, really? Because that would betray your entire character. She's like, right, right. <laughs> and then they have a great big hug. A, a pre-death hug. <laughs> Jesus. All right. And then the Chiron comes up, tells us it's 10 p.m. Again, we have not been told when the execution is, right? We know it's got to be at least an hour and a half because he's in his prison cell. That's a long ways from the shooting wall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but they come in and they're like, okay, if everybody wants to come out of their cells and say goodbye to Peter, he is the main character. So we're going to offer everybody a chance to do that. Yeah. He gets to do his little handshake, your goodbye thing. We got Cooper Jun- Gooding Jr. He comes out. He's doing that thing where he's like nodding and winking at pretend people in the crowd to make it look like he's engaged with the audience yes. from the stage. So, oh, hi. Yeah, no, it's great to see you over there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right, right. Again, pretty sure he was just in a fugue state believing he lives in this place. And he's just nodding <laughs> in like, yeah, it's, it's, it's me, Cuba Gooding Jr. That's right. Oh, maybe that's it. Maybe he got arrested for drugs in Indonesia and he's like the death penalty and they're like, worse. <laughs> 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 Gotta be that. Amnesty International was like, all right, we're going to try to get you out of this movie and get you killed. 
there's also I, I have to I have to say I love this fucking moment so much because Cuba Gooding Jr. He walks out and he's doing it with all the kind of slow gravitas that you would for the very end of the movie. But the guard actors who are just the guys who are at this camp, right? They don't realize that they should like match that pace, so they keep bumping into him, <laughs> yeah. and then he has to slow him down again. But so, but now they're gonna they're gonna walk the mile, and as they do, they're gonna sing "Amazing Grace." which would be an incredibly impactful moment if we hadn't done that in literally the last scene. If the yes. movie didn't Seconds step ago. on yeah. its own line moments ago in their script, it's the best. And apparently this is the thing, the, the whole thing says it's based on a true story. This is the bit of the story that's true, that apparently when they got shot, they sang Amazing Grace in front of the firing squad and then they were halfway through singing another hymn and that's when they got shot. So like, they didn't want to show, I guess, the second hymn that, they died, that <laughs> yes. the guards didn't want to hear. <laughs> so they just reprised Amazing Grace. But that's the only bit of this really. The, the, yeah. the filibuster one, yeah. Yeah, exactly. In real life, where in Amazing Grace do you think they got shot? Like in real life, if you're do if you're the executioner, no, it's a different hymn. They they let him finish. They finished Amazing Grace. Yeah. Oh, oh, they they got in real life. Allegedly, they got through the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. And then something else. Yeah. So, oh, what would be amazing is if the guards all like held up lighters after Amazing Grace and they're like, no, that's good. Go again. Go and do another one. And then they they shot him as soon <laughs> they as had they had to try to improvise a new hymn. Oh. <laughs> and they just get shot right away. Yeah. Outstanding Grace. <laughs> I, I <laughs> But everybody sings, even the guards that are taking them out to die, everybody sings. The guards are now ugly cries singing, yes, like, in a yes. really bad way. <laughs> yes. yep. I wrote, this is the stupidest scene I've ever seen set in a prison. The prison scene in Paddington was more realistic <laughs> than this scene. <laughs> well, so here's the thing. Okay, I cry at everything. It's so easy to make me cry at your fucking Super Bowl commercial or your cartoon or mm. whatever you want to make me cry. This scene, in the hands of even the most basically moderately competent filmmaker would have me bawling these two guys walking out you've got a great actor in Cuba Gooding Jr. to do it and they're singing on this beautiful fucking song you have to be so incompetent for me not to cry during this scene and I was dry eyed during this fucking scene <laughs> you were marrying yeah. it all yes. the way through this scene yeah. <laughs> to his credit though I was definitely weeping when he did the first one he fucking nailed it he absolutely nailed the first one yeah he was great yeah so, okay, so now it's time for him to get shot. So it must be 1130, I guess. I don't know. Neither of them need no blindfold because they're no sissy atheists. They're ready for it. Oh, there's a lovely thing. Some of the members of the firing squad, one of them is dressed like he's in Rainbow Six. The rest are all yep. in camel gear. He's all in black. Yep. Several of them are wearing helmets. Are they expecting the prisoners to shoot back? Why would like, they? I, I think you're not going to take flak from these guys. <laughs> okay. In, in fairness, when they did the practice on the mannequins, there was an extra bullet from some asshole. Yeah, in the that's background. true. That's Craig, true. What the fuck are you doing? You're not even in the line. <laughs> now we man. have to wear helmets for these. This is crazy. So, so they go. Do you want? Do you have any last words? And Peter's like, I forgive all of you. You're just doing your jobs. And I'm like, that's terrible. And then they say, Coop, do you have any uh, last words? He says, Hallelujah, he is risen. And I'm like, oh, that's even fucking worse. You're making Peter's words look good. And then there's a third guy. They go to this third guy and they're like, do you have any words? And he goes, nah, I'm not. I'm not. And they don't show it to us. Right. Like, they they, they and I'm like, does the third guy turn out to be Albert Einstein? What's happening? With this? <laughs> Eventually, they'll, they'll show a third guy and it's just some rando because apparently there was some other guy that was there, there with him when they got shot. So they wanted to be accurate to it. But it's so weird for him to just go. And how about you? And we're all like, who? So, yeah, that's like <laughs> other guy at the crucifixion. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. That's a rough one. Yeah. So, OK, so now it's time. They're going to count down the, the firing squad is going to count down. It's time to shoot them. Ready, aim, fire. But no one can bring themselves to shoot Peter. Or maybe the third guy. We don't know, actually. <laughs> now that it might have been <laughs> that he was really popular. We don't really yeah. know. Craig, what the fuck? We obviously we just did Amazing Grace. We're not firing. So. <laughs> So yeah, but they, but then Tanu's like, no, no, you have to shoot him. I'm yelling at you now. Shoot him, and then they do. And so the thing about this is right. Earlier, we we didn't quite touch on it, but earlier they mentioned about the firing squad. They they, call, they stand you in front of the firing wall, and you know that wall has never seen a bullet hit it because the firing squad never missed. That's going right. to be a big yeah, scary yeah. thing. That they set that up, and I wrote, oh, okay. So now the firing squad have all deliberately missed. Right. They know they never miss, but yes. the wall is going to be pockmarked in bullets because they don't want to shoot. Oh. It's not that. It's they just not, killed them. Yeah, they didn't even do that. That would have right. been great. Exactly. This was, they, they, they absolutely set up this cheesy fucking ending that actually could have been at least kind of clever. But no, they didn't 
fucking do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's so incredible. So yeah, so they die, nothing happened. The birds fly by. That's probably symbolic of some fucking thing, right? Yeah. And so the guards go back in and then Tanu has his atheist mop fit. Yes. That was the best. Right? Where he's just running around yelling at people. Now, again, like they tried to set Tanu up as this terrible, awful person, but they, I guess for whatever reason, the movie doesn't want to make him do any terrible, awful things. So he's just kind of walking around half shoving people going, get out of yourself. No, get back into yourself. Now get out of yeah, yourself. Simon says, come back out of yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's some identical twins we've never seen. They're the only ones sharing a cell. That seems unfair. I mean, I know <laughs> yeah. they've shared like close quarters accommodation before in their existence, but that was a long time ago before they were born. You don't have to force them into a cell now. Yeah. He yells at one guy for having a cross earring. And again, like, you know, you think he's going to like reach up and snatch the earring out or say something. No, he's just going to yell at him. And then he throws a broom at the end of this. But, <laughs> but and this is so good, they don't have a prop broom. And he's and he's like he doesn't want to hurt anybody, so he like he goes in a rage and he like calculates exactly where he can throw so that none of because there's people around him all over the place, yeah. right? So he has to very carefully, angrily throw this broom. So. <laughs> Does a javelin run up? Oh, yeah, right. That, yeah. In, during your tantrum, you're doing a run up. It's okay, weird, okay, weird. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, so and then so, so he leaves. Then we get the scene where Eddie says goodbye to Miriam. I know you were worried we'd miss that scene in the movie. <laughs> what with how important a character Eddie is. Eddie explains that she, you know, he doesn't think that he's good enough to lead the the ministry now that Peter's gone. And she's like, well, you know, I'm I'm Mary fucking Poppins. I'm leaving now. My work here is done. So, <laughs> And I felt that Eddie was disappointed that she didn't come with the chapel. Like, right. I, I, I assumed that was going to pass along. <laughs> so does he, when he passes on? No, I know. It's like stupid for me to even ask. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, and, and he's like, oh, by the way, I have a letter that Peter left for me to give to you after he was dead. Right. But he didn't. He didn't do that. Because he says, oh, you know, like, uh, he, he gave me this letter right before he was killed. But he didn't because she was, in, she was the one in the room with him before he was called yep. for execution. So like, <laughs> if he had a letter, he could have given it to then. And then the letter starts with, I'm writing this quick note as they take me away. So, no, you're not because she sat with you. We can watch her sit with right. you while you're being taken away. <laughs> right. And then we watched you get taken away. Are you say, well, They show you us know, it. They show us in the flashback while he says the words, I'm writing this as they take me away. They show us in flashback her with him at that yes. moment. It's insane. <laughs> what a weird lie for your death letter. <laughs> but you know what it is, guys? He wrote it during that hour and a half walk to the shooting Why? wall, right? Okay. He probably no, had plenty of time. So means. it's kind of hard to write while you're walking, but it's not impossible. So, and then he, so they have the voiceover read the letter and it's so banal. <laughs> like he's just like, well, you know, I'm in heaven. So suck it. You have to wait. Bah. Gotcha. And that's it. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, and and she says, and Eddie says, what does it say? And she's like, nah, it's nothing. It's just yada, 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 really, basically. And then Eddie's like, you know, you can cry if you want to. And she's like, no, nah, it's my character's thing. I, I don't cry. He's like, are you sure it's not that you're not a good enough actor to cry? And she says, shut up. Why don't you fucking <laughs> shut up, Eddie? You're not even really a character in the movie. They just thought of you in the third act. God damn it. So, yeah. So then Eddie pastors. We get to watch him pastor one more time. Yes, the movie's about Eddie now. I don't fucking understand it. <laughs> So he gets to the end of his sermon. He's like, you know, I know I'm not very good at sermoning, but if anybody wanted a little bit of Jesus, uh, I do have some extra. <laughs> <laughs> and just then, Captain Tanu comes in to receive Jesus and become a Christian. <sighs> so the answer to why would God not step in and save Peter is that he needed Peter to die to save Tanu's soul. Right? Yes. Yeah, and so I don't know. Maybe this sort of happened in a true story. I didn't look it up, but like the claim is a guy in Indonesia, a warden at a prison in Indonesia became a Christian weepily mm -hmm. because of this. Mm. Who That guy, almost certainly a Muslim person in real life, right? Yeah. And this movie being like, yeah, check mark, nailed it. Got him. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's not like he stopped being a warden at an Indonesian death prison or anything afterwards or anything. He's just now a Christian one. Yeah. Yeah. 
but right. So, but then we cut to Miriam and she's weeping at Tanu becoming a Christian. Finally, she can cry again. And fair play to Tanu. He is weeping. He is, he is snot weeping. This yes. is probably the only, the only good bit of acting not done by Cooper Gooding Jr. is Tanu like doing this like incredible over the top weeping. It's yes. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And then the fucking title card comes up to tell us this film is dedicated to the Christians killed at the Karabokan prison in Indonesia. Not the other prisons. Those Muslims and those aliens can fuck themselves. This yeah. is this movie's for the Christians. Only the Christians who got <laughs> fuck killed. Fuck Lou. Did you see what, what a sissy about. Lou was about this shit? Yeah. Presumably Morgan also died. We don't know. But he must have died in a, in a, a way that was particularly dramatic or cinematic. So we'll never find out. That's it. it. <laughs> and that's the fucking movie. Ah. Oh. God, this is, I'm so much, I'm so happy we did this instead of Bitcoin. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> that does it for our review of the firing squad, but it's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to fall backwards into this same pit again next week. So Heath, tell us what's on deck. We've got more Cuba Gooding Jr. Fucking what? That's right. <laughs> Here's the description of the next movie from IMDb. When in a rock war veteran receives a calling from a higher power. He embarks on a mission to stop a fallen angel from raising an army of the dead to take over the world. Cuba is going to be starring alongside Denise Richards and, what? and so much better, <laughs> UFC legend Randy Couture. What? In Angels Fallen, Warriors of Peace. Oh, that sounds that's... amazing. I have put the poster in the notes. The poster oh, and it Check looks it amazing as well. I feel bad for Eli. This is so mean for us to steal this movie from Eli. <laughs> All right. So with that to genuinely look forward to, we're going to bring episode 470 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Marsh for all his help. Be sure to check the show notes for a link to all of his other stuff. He's got other stuff. And a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at 